I got a question about your excursion here in Iceland. Um, have you stopped uh -huh. by the penis museum yet? I, oh my you know, God. there's tons of I've penises everywhere and I didn't understand why. And, uh, wait, that there's makes just a lot of a penises museum. around Iceland. So you're, I, I mean, you're I, like in the, <laughs> how many penises have you seen? I went to, they do have a penis museum and there's a lot of penises there, but I wasn't just seeing penises around <laughs> Iceland. <laughs> Welcome back to Macro Dosing. It is Thursday. It is March 21st. It's spring. Spring sprung. We made it. Boys and girls, winter's over. Anything else happening today? Opening day of baseball. Is it? It's opening day. Yeah, well, technically, right? Yeah. It's well, first game played. That was yesterday. It's very funny that, that MLB. Oh, I was. you're talking about today, Wednesday. Yeah. I was talking about today, Thursday. It's March Madness. Yeah. The tournament starts. When you said it was Thursday, that's what I meant by today. I would predict that this might be our least listened to episode of the entire year. Um, because Billy's going to be on it. No, because uh, <laughs> Billy's actually not on right now. He's going to be joining in a little bit. Just because thir we've, we found this out in part of my take. The Friday episode of part of my take is maybe our least listened to episode of the year. Uh, because everyone just is watching games. I mean, you've only got a couple yes, hours but, before yeah. your whole day is taken. I know part of my take and macro dosing probably have a fair amount of overlap, but part of my take, everyone who listens is a sports fan. That's true. Macro dosing, you probably have like 30% of listeners that just don't really follow sports. Yeah. 40. And yeah. also shout out to those people. Yeah. Respect. A lot of respect. I don't know how you deal with Big T's incessant Tennessee ramblings, but. You bring up Tennessee on this show more than I do. Well, it's because you get fired up by Tennessee. Sometimes. I like to push your buttons. Um, congratulations to the Tennessee Volunteers who will be winning in mm -hmm. about how many hours? When do they play? Fucking late. It's like nine twenty or something. I would I would much rather get it over with. Like have give me an early game on Thursday. I have to wait until Friday at nine forty for JMU to play. Yeah. Especially for like a like this is a game that we should win handily, so like Yeah. I'd rather just go ahead and play it and then but you know, late Thursday night, whatever, we'll play and yep. hopefully win. All right. Well, uh, today's episode is brought to you by the Rent app, and we've got something truly special for all the renters and landlords out there. Paying rent is something we all have to do. Let's be honest. It can sometimes be a bit of a hassle. I hate paying rent. You have to write a check. You have to, I told you the story about dropping off at my landlord's office in person. You have to worry about all these crazy things behind the scenes to just pay your rent, and it should be easy to do, and the Rent app has made it easy to do. It's more straightforward. It's beneficial for your financial future. With the Rent app, it's the ultimate tool for renters everywhere. It takes the hassle out of paying rent because it deposits your payments directly into your landlord's bank account. No more trips to the ATM. No more mailing checks. No more ma managing balances in multiple apps. Just simple direct transactions that make life easier for both you and your landlord. No fees. No weekly limits. That's right. The Rent app is completely free for you to use. No need for your landlord to create an account. It's completely free for them too. The Rent app is about helping you build a brighter financial future. By optionally reporting your on-time rent payments to the three major credit bureaus, the Rent app brings you one step closer to home ownership, and it helps boost your credit score. Best of all, you can get $50 cash back on your first rent payment with the Rent app. Why wait? Go to the App Store, download the Rent app today, follow Rent app at Rent app on Instagram and Twitter, and to get that 50 bucks cash back, go to rent.app slash barstool, $50 cash back on your first rent payment. If you're a landlord, go to rent.app slash landlord to get paid on time and without hassle. All right, we're back in the studio. It's uh, myself. Donnie's joining because Arian can't make it. He's got some uh, some kid stuff with school that he's taking care of today. So Donnie's sitting in. We got Big T, Mad Dog McKenzie behind the glass, and Billy is in Iceland, and he's joining, and he's wearing – God damn, he's wearing a suit and tie again. Uh, Billy's really, really taking this run seriously, which I love, kind of. But um, – I got I got a story I want to tell you guys uh, because it's how I woke up yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I I was scared. I was terrified yesterday morning. I uh, um, basically survived a home invasion. So I uh, I woke up at about eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I heard a noise upstairs, and I sleep on the second floor. There's a rooftop uh, on my house. I sleep on the second floor. I thought I heard something coming from upstairs. And uh, Blake was on the bed with me and Blake also woke up and he was like, what's going on? He, you could tell he was like high alert. 
And then about 30 seconds later, I heard a very loud noise. No mistake about it coming from my roof. Something's going on in my house. Blake jumped up on the bed, started barking. Hair stands up on his back. He's a very good guard dog. And uh, I was I was like ready to roll. I was like, what's going on? I get my phone, get ready to call the police. I, uh, I have a legally registered taser. Because we were give we were given tasers in New York when they sponsored either mac I think they sponsored macrodosing a long time ago. I fr it was something because I wanted one and I did not get one. And it looks like a handgun. It's it, it like if you saw me carrying it on the street because there's a holster on there, right? It looks like I've got a handgun. Um, and I keep my taser nearby for such just such an occurrence. I grab the taser. Blake's running around the room freaking out. Um, I didn't have time to put on clothes, so I'm just wearing my underwear. And I open up the door to my bedroom. Blake sprints out. He's like, let's go. He's like looking at me. Where am I going? Follow me around. But he's ready to roll. And I'm ready to roll. I go upstairs to the roof. I go outside. And I'm like walking. Real I'm basically John Wick at this point. I'm like walking around, looking around corners. I turn around the corner. And um, there was just a giant trash can that had gotten blown over on my roof. And that's what made all the noise. And so then I take a second to collect myself. Blake looks at me like, are we cool? Are we cool? And then I realized that my rooftop is clearly visible by all my neighbors and they can just see me out there in my underwear holding what appears to be a handgun. Like, what the fuck is this guy up to? Well, what time was this at? About eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. I was thinking middle of the night. No, it was about eight o'clock a.m. I my thought was that somebody had broken into my neighbor's house or had gone up like their back fire escape and then gone over on my roof because the houses are very close together. And so I thought somebody was trying to like break in from the roof, which I don't know if like that's even something that happens, but that's what was going through my head. And then uh, I realized it was a trash can. And then I realized it looked like a crazy person with a gun in my underwear on my roof. And so I like run back inside before somebody calls the cops on me and uh, go back down to the bedroom. Blake comes back down to the bedroom. He gets on the bed and he's just looking at me. He's got like this, you know, dogs smile sometimes. They're like, you can tell when a dog's happy. And he's just like looking at me like, yeah, that was awesome. We were ready. We were ready to fuck <laughs> yeah. shit up together. I was like, "Yeah, Blake." Now I know Blake's a ride or die. Like, yeah. he he will fuck something up with me if he sees me freaking out. Now, say if it was a raccoon, because that's what I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Would Blake have just like attacked the raccoon? He probably would have become bros with it. He okay. probably would have just been like, "Let's play." They have some big ass raccoons in Chicago. They like, do. Maybe the size of Blake. So yeah, I could see them being friends. Yeah, they could be friends. There's some big rabbits in Chicago too. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was freaked out a little bit yesterday morning, but I, it's good to know that I've got a dog that's ride or die. Mm -hmm. Like we will, we will fuck some stuff up together. We're the bash bros. Dude, I did anti-aggression training so much with Whitey that it made him a terrible guard dog. Oh really? He's yeah. He's terrible. Like notoriously bad. So if anyone wants like, to break into Billy's house, it's safe. Oh, but you have a guard. Or, or is it? You you have a guard hedgehog. Yeah, I have a guard hedgehog. Yeah, my hedgehog, when it broke out of its cage, it attacked my dog. Oh, my God. But he's got one eye now. That's you know how scary. crazy it is to wake up in the middle of the night and have your dog huddled in the corner? Like, it, like you think something's, like, actually in the house that's scary enough to put him in the corner, but it's just your hedgehog that's, like, hissing at it? Yeah, that's – uh, actually, if I was an intruder, I'd be more scared of a hedgehog attacking me than a dog. Yeah, or I, I'll just throw the hedgehog at you. It's like the best missile ever. Yeah. Yeah. W would it like stick you? It would stick you and then it would bite you and then it would just go nuts on you. Um, sorry, I'm late. I, I was shooting a uh, uh, my campaign announcement. In Iceland. The original Long no, Island. No, no, we're, we're <laughs> Make it the 51st true, true. state. Or do we already Honestly, have? No, yeah, it, it would be the fifty-first day. Oh, wait, wait a sneaky. second, wait a second, Billy. Uh, Mad Dog and McKenzie both have their jaws on the ground right now. <laughs> oh my no. god! What? What's what's up? You have you have to share this. You guys are freaking out over there. Sorry, sorry. Can you... We can cut it if we need to. Yeah. I don't know. What? So, did you guys see yesterday? Oh my god! No. Did, I, did you guys see yesterday that? The Connor Griffin. Connor Griffin went to the Olivia Rodrigo concert. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we, we are like, close friends with Connor we Griffin. We were, like, joking with him because he 
he kept saying like, oh, it's for content. Like I have to take Caitlin or a random person. That's what Titus and Brandon told me. Yep. And then Titus came over and was like, I didn't say that you could take whoever. So yep. then we were like kind of joshing with him. Like, oh, what the fuck, Connor? Are you lying? Why didn't blah, you blah, take blah, blah, us? Blah, blah. And I had a good idea. I said, well, all of the girls in the office I wanted to go should have done the yak gauntlet. Like, and whoever got the fastest time got to go. Big Cat just texted me saying he'll buy tickets for me and Mackenzie tonight. No oh, way. Oh, for the Rodrigo concert? Yeah. No way. There's no way. I can't even accept. I can't even. Because we were like totally joking with Connor. And it makes sense that he brought Caitlyn because like. Of the whole pucking yeah, situation. Yeah, and like it was for content or whatever. And like also her brother did buy half the ticket if we think about it. True. <laughs> so it like makes sense. <laughs> Connor should get it. He should get an, uh, a dozen team and his niche category should be Brandon's sister. Oh yeah. My god. Oh my god, that would be so <laughs> funny. Oh my god, things about Caitlin Walker. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Fun facts. I don't know if they're talking about it on the yak or something cuz this is we record this during the yak. Oh, you're right. That's probably what it is. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Yeah, that was that was what it was. Let's I might be in my go. I might be in my oh, we might be in our O-Rod era tonight. <laughs> O-Rod. O-Rod. She's good. I like she's, her. She's so great. cool. She is great. Except that she stole good for you from Paramore. She credited them. Though. She did after the fact. Yeah. After the fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When everybody was like. It's the same. Song. Yeah. Why are you copying right. this? It's still a banger. It's such a banger. I still like it. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> They're definitely talking about it on the yak because I'm looking at the comments right now and it's saying like have the girls run the gauntlet to see who gets to go. <laughs> Sup Mackenzie. Mackenzie. <laughs> We're going to send McKenzie to the Rodriguez <laughs> concert. <laughs> Wait, what do I even say? Oh, my no. God. I feel bad because, like, we were just, like, totally, like, messing with Connor because he was, like, lying to us. And we were like, what the hell, Connor? Blah, 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 blah. And he's, like, our friend. So we were just like, what the heck? <laughs> Where's she playing? United, United Center. Center. Oh, yeah. So she had last night and tonight. And me and Mackenzie were looking at tickets yesterday during mm -hmm. work being, like, could we swing this? Like, right, could right, we? Yeah. And her, I mean, concerts are just like ridiculous right now. Yeah. And like, they were really, really expensive for like day of tickets. Yeah. I got Olivia it. Rodrigo selling out multiple nights at arenas. Yeah. Yes. She's in an Apple she's commercial. Really good. She's huge. Wait. Oh my God. I know. Oh, That's she, Billie I, Eilish. Grammy. She did not win an Oscar. She yeah. won Grammy. She won a Grammy. She won a Grammy. She won Even multiple. better. Billie Eilish is the one that's winning the Oscars. I gotta do a better job of going to concerts. I've I've ducked out on like the last three concerts I've really wanted to see here in Chicago, and I feel terrible about yeah, it. Yeah, same here. Also, Connor said that was his third concert ever. That's the other weird. the mm -hmm. other two are Travis Scott and Jason Aldean. I was what like, a what a trio. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that Dude, is. Dude, I saw shocking. Zach Bryan on Friday. Sick. Yeah, he puts on a hell of a show. Dude, he's he's just insane. It's insane how hard him and like. And his band just goes so damn hard. Yeah. Donnie, you want to hold each other accountable? Go to more concerts? Yeah. I think we should have a quota to meet. I think we, we each need to go to three concerts before Easter. Actually, okay. That's in a I week. Mean, is it? Oh, Easter is next weekend. Oh, wait, fuck. What? Okay. Yeah. So we can when, go to the when Olivia did you Rodrigo. think Easter was? I thought Easter was like late April. No. I forgot. I forgot well, it might Easter. be some years. I mean, it varies. Okay. But. It's usually yeah. end of March, beginning of April. Yeah. yeah. It's 40 days after Ash mm. Wednesday. No, I think, all right, maybe it's three concerts before maybe, um, maybe Memorial, Memorial Day. Maybe Memorial Day? Yeah. Okay, I'm in. Donnie, shake on it. All right, three concerts before Memorial Day. Yeah. I'm going to Tim McGraw in May. Y'all want to go? Sure. No. There's one of mine. I'm, I need to use my three concerts wisely. I'm I mean, not, Tim McGraw's a legend. Tim McGraw. uh, me first Donnie, in the Gimme Gimme's is playing. Uh, I'm going to go to that. I am Donnie. You went to a cancer concert in uh, December, pretty I, recent. I did. What? Yeah, uh, we went to uh... Niega Niega Festival. <laughs> what is that? Um, it's the largest <laughs> music festival in East Africa. But when we were there, we didn't see a single person perform. Um, we saw and, one, and no one really went because there was a lot of terrorist threats out for the concert. So uh -huh. the U.S. Embassy was like, "Do not go to this music festival." Did anything um, happen? No. Nothing happened, but like we were there during the day and the turnout was not great. I think the, all the terror threats scared people away. Yeah, that sucks. A shame. Yep. All right. So probably going to go to Tim McGraw. I'm going to go to Riot Fest this year. I missed out on Riot Fest last year. I deeply reg regret it. Slayer is playing this year. Mm -hmm. Pretty pumped about that. Um, yeah. I got to get back in the live music scene. Nothing like it. Nothing like a good live concert. And I can count 
uh, a pop punk concert. Um, but you're can you count that? Yeah, because you're playing I'm, the music. I'm still going to a concert. I'm when, listening to live when's, music. When's the next concert? I don't know if I'm at liberty to say. Okay. What I will say is that I believe our first concert. We're doing a summer tour this year, and I I think I can say it's sponsored by Pink Whitney. So we've got like a significant budget for it. We're playing I think five shows over the course of the summer all across the United States. It's going to be awesome. Caroline's going to be joining us. Uh, we've got Nick that's going to be joining us for the entire thing too. And, uh, we're going to be playing a show. I believe our first show is in Chicago. That's all I'll oh, say. Sweet. Oh, nice. I'll be there. And we're going to have everyone from the office go to it. And it's going to yeah, be a lot we'll of go fun to the one in Chicago. And I gotta, what I have to do is figure out some, some guests that can join us on stage from the Barstool Chicago office. So I don't know if anyone can sing. I don't know if we have any other musicians here. I could I could perform a few of the songs I've made in the past. Yeah, I have a Stella Blue anthem, but the concert's not sponsored by Stella Blue, so we I could, don't know. We could still work fit. something. We could change the lyrics around. Yeah, Goose in My Basket. Check out that one. That was one of my first bangers back in the day. How does Stella Blue anthem go? Um, we can play it on the pod if you want, but okay. it's on YouTube. Search Stella Blue anthem. Uh, filmed the uh, maybe the first music video ever filmed at Everest Base Camp. Oh, okay. What's a man gotta do for a pie? Didn't you kind of write it like on the spot? Um, or you had the yeah, beat or something? I, um, no, I, I did not have the beat. Oh, I, okay. I had to find someone to make the beat after I got back from Everest. But I had like the first like f five or eight lines figured out, so I knew what I had to film. That is very impressive. You can just throw a clip in the pod yeah yeah i'm gonna listen yeah. to it later i think and, yes. and see if we can um yes learn a now live version of it. is nick is he going to be playing an instrument sorry not not nick tarani nick hamilton oh yeah and oh. and he plays guitar right? he plays guitar and he plays keyboards and he's also doing a lot of multimedia stuff for us like setting up the visuals so it's going to be a sick concert it's going to be we're putting in time to actually like produce it okay nice. and so it should be a lot of fun and and pat is Still your manager? Yeah, yeah, the Beave. The Beave. The Beave is helping us book all these shows. <clears throat> Going to be in a van or an RV for a little bit of it. So, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that. It's honestly like the pup punk concerts are probably the most fun thing, most fun live event that that I get to do at Barstool. Like, we don't do any part of my take live shows. We do some like meet and greets sometimes, which are fun, and it's good to get out with the people and and say hi to everyone and take a bunch of pictures and and just chop it up. But um, the pub punk shows are just like a whole new level of energy and uh, everyone has a good time. So if you just want to have a good time and sing along to songs that you know the words to and hear a couple originals sprinkled in. And also Roan is incredible. Roan's yeah. a, a, a great front man. So uh, come out and see us. We'll be announcing those dates shortly, I'm sure. Uh, all right. So, Billy, you're you're in Iceland still. How's the volcano? I tried to go get to it this morning and um it was it's a long story i basically in iceland you can get away with a lot of things um okay. just like don't have to pay for parking because no one really polices any of the rules um the volcano is the only thing they take seriously so all the roads were blocked uh i was like i drove like an hour and a half trying to get there to get some cool stuff um try to see some magma and stuff Roads were blocked. I sort of like went around a couple, you know, did a little off-roading. Um, you know, the, the Icelandics, they're pretty laid back. But then once I started to get closer to the volcano, I like got by like two boundaries using like parking lots. And, you know, most of Iceland is just flat volcanic ash, dirt stuff. So it's easy to drive on. They caught me. Uh, and yeah. they, they they were pissed. They were pissed. They're like, "How the hell did you get past here?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm a I'm a journalist." Um, and then they they were pissed. So the only footage I have of the volcano is from as close as I could get. I was on the same road the magma had gone over, but I couldn't see the magma because it was over a hill. Um, and it's a pretty bad picture. You can see the the stuff coming out of it, the smoke, but it was a pretty cloudy day. Is there but they take their their volcanoes pretty seriously. I they know, take nothing else seriously. Was there like a way that you could have just legally seen the volcano? Like if you bought a tour no, or it's something? A, like, it's like a 
if you sign it's up a for, disaster yeah, it's so, erupting it's erupting right now so pe oh, people so in iceland like, are freaking out yeah it's not a yeah, tourist attraction not right now it's like actually it's actually dangerous to be in iceland right now and billy's billy's got boots I, on. i yeah. had no idea okay um yeah no they evacuated this fishing village uh, that I sort of got through in a back way, and it was pretty weird being the only one there. Um, but that's when they showed up and found me. Have you so, have you thought about how cool it would be though to die in a volcano? I was thinking that if I died because of a volcano, everyone would laugh so damn hard, and I'd be found like one of those dudes in Pompeii, just doing something random before he died. Yeah, just drinking an energy drink. Yeah, just a Red Bull. I was, sl I mean, uh, just drinking whatever energy drink, yeah. just slamming them, run towards like those storm chasers, like be a, a volcano chaser, but that's pretty easy because they don't move. But uh, <laughs> it was, it was pretty wild. Yeah. The, like I could see the smoke coming over the horizon and uh, I was like, oh man, we're going to the volcano. And I was like, this, this is a rush. This is a rush. It's like driving into a storm, but different. Yeah. Future societies but, find Billy and they're like, we found this man, uh, it was a frog right next to him that died at the same time. Crazy. <laughs> the, this frog has other the frog was found in his crotch. Yeah. B wow. Blunt force trauma to the back of it. <laughs> the frog's skull. <laughs> Dude, what I think this man this frog's was a skull. He, he was a frog hunter of some sort and had a uh, had some sort of tool that he used to bludgeon the frog to death in its throat. <laughs> I got to see magma oh. once in Hawaii and it was very cool. Yeah. Um, and you're close, but at one point the rubber on the bottom of my shoes started to melt because it was like heating up the rocks I was on. And then you're like, shit, we got to get out of here. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good signal to leave. There was one summer, like it was really more like two or three years in a row. Um, when I was growing up where, uh, disaster movies were like the big thing. It was Twister. Oh yeah. It was, uh, it was, Two volcano Sharknado. movies Armageddon. came out at the same time. That was crazy. It was Volcano and Dante's Peak. Yes. Yep. And I, I, to this day, I forget which one's which. One had Tommy Lee Jones in it, I think, and one had Pierce Brosnan. Volcano took place like in Los Angeles, I think, and then Dante's Peak took place in a more like rural setting. With but, volcano hunters or something? Yeah. I just remember a scene in Dante's Peak when there's – swimming in a hot spring and then the magnum the magma breaks through into the hot spring and like makes the water boil and like i think like an old woman boils to death oh jesus i don't yeah, know if y'all heard this or not but as you were describing movies that came out in the 90s billy interjected and was like yeah sharknado <laughs> oh yeah sharknado classic no. 90s flick <laughs> I thought you were talking about that summer where Sharknado came out and then like Sharknado 2 came out like right after in Piranha. Piranha 4D. Or yeah. Like that. Yeah. What a – oh, you know what else I figured out? So volcanoes, right? That's why the – that's why Iceland has the strongest men in the world. I, I figured it out last night. The volcanoes? I, I connect, yeah. And hear me out. This is why. So I tried picking up those lifting stones. Um that basically all the like you had to pick up uh this 400 pound lifting stone to get onto a boat to like be a fisherman and to like go raiding we talked about this last time so they have a bunch of them they exist in england scotland um and iceland and what i realized when checking out some glaciers was that there were these huge boulders in the middle of fields now if you look at all agricultural societies, they have some system of field clearing, right? They'll pick up rocks and put them uh, into walls on the side. So like e even in New England, like that's how once you clear land, you put all the rocks in a rock wall at the edge of your uh, you know, plot of land. And that's how a lot of property lines are marked, right? Mm -hmm. so, this, so this process of rock clearing um, exists all across Northern Europe and agricultural nations. The thing is, Iceland has the biggest rocks that got moved into fields because what moves those rocks are glaciers. And the thing is, because Iceland is so newly formed because of volcanoes, it's a newly formed volcanic island. Like geologically, it's like young as hell. Uh, and like is only like 20 million years old as opposed to like 100. So there's been more glacial movement over Northern Europe, pushing rocks and grinding them down and making them smaller. 
there's only been so much glacial movement movement on Iceland. So all the big rocks that the glacier pushes, they haven't been knocked around and broken up as much. So they just were bigger. So you just had all these dudes trying to farm with the biggest rocks. And now thousands of years later, they're the strongest men in the world and win all the uh, strongman competitions. And it's not even because they're the only ones juicing the most. Like these guys win out of everyone who's juicing. So, so it's actually wild. So you think it's because people in Iceland had to move bigger rocks to make their fences? And yes. the people that ended up having good fences that could keep them safe were the strongest ones. And they were the ones that were safe and able to procreate at a higher rate. More that the ones who could move the rocks out of their fields to farm could farm the and most food. clear the most okay. land were the ones who survived. And thus we're now at the point where they can lift up the most rocks like lifting. These guys have been lifting rocks, heavy rocks for thousands of years. Like it was built into their agricultural lifestyle and they would then became part of their maritime lifestyle. And now they're the strongest man in the world. So it's not just they're using the most juice because the like uh, steroids is everywhere. Everyone's using steroids. There's Russian dudes on steroids. There's, but they're beating all of them. They're beating the Scottish dudes who also did rock lifting. So what was different about their rock lifting they have the biggest boulders because they have they're younger and haven't been broken down as much by glacial movement that broke down all the other rocks in the other parts of the country, uh, other countries. I like have, that. I so it. like you, I'm like looking at, I'm looking at these landscapes that I'm driving past and I'm like, what, like what makes this different? And you just see all these gigantic rocks and fields. And I'm like, holy shit. If they were to survive, they had to move the rocks to plant their fields. And that's, that's Light my bulb hypothesis. Moment. Wow. Yeah. So if you just look at these photos, there's just giant, Solid hypothesis. giant rocks. That's not a bad hypothesis. It's no. better. It's better than one that I saw from uh, Joe Rogan the other week. Chris Long actually sent it over to me and he was like, Hey, I thought you'd appreciate this video. And it's Joe Rogan um, talking to some guest. I forget who it was about why men have beards and women don't. And the explanation was like beards provide you. Uh, a cushion against uh, being attacked by things. So like if you, if you go to battle and you get hit in your face, if you have a beard, it lessens the, the intensity of the contact and the, like the pressure that's put on your jaw. And so the mightiest warriors were the ones that had beards back in the day because they could absorb fiercer blows to their face. And that's why women don't have beards is because they didn't, they didn't have to fight in wars. So that natural selection never happened. Um, I don't think that's why women don't have facial hair. No, I don't think so either. But I, now I'm trying to. But now I'm trying to think like, what's the real reason? Because like, no, does, I think does that's that pretty solid. Does that happen with a lot of other animals, like where the male species is hairier than the female? Lions. Oh yeah, yeah. think about lions it. have a mane. Lions' manes. I think the mane is to, like protect their neck from rivals trying to kill them. I, I think thought the mane Joe is Rogan more to like is... attract a female, like a large mane. You'll attract more females. Um, the lion's mane has often been viewed as a shield that protects a male's neck during fights against other males. <clears throat> but lions mostly attack each other on the back and hips. Instead, the size and coloration of the mane serves as a signal to other lions about the male's fitness, similar to the showiness of the peacock's tail. Okay. Big mane everything. equals good. So having having a beard makes you more attractive. Is the beard I mean, just a sign of? Online, it's just like well, the male sex hormone like causes beards to grow, and the female sex hormone does not. But that obviously that doesn't explain it. Well, also, I mean, it has to do with like probably protecting the face from uh, the elements because a lot of uh, culture. A lot of uh, peoples that don't grow beards are from warmer places. Actually, that's totally wrong. Uh, there are tons of bearded people in the Middle East in the desert. Good um, fact check. So, but but could be protecting them from sand. Um, but like, what are some people who can't grow beards? Well, me. Um, <laughs> a lot Irish of, people. A lot of Asian cultures don't grow a ton of facial hair. Um, Mexicans, uh, I mean, like uh, the Aztecs, so the local Aztecs, oh. like they didn't 
have a lot of facial hair and then like these crazy bearded guys show up and they're like wow like they had never seen anyone with a beard that big when they showed up um and then there's the weird thing where they found ruins of people with beards from the aztecs and it's like well who the hell were these guys before yeah, yeah. i i think it probably if we're going to go the evolutionary route it probably has to do with the fact that there's something that could be intimidating by a guy with a big beard that isn't as intimidating as a guy with a, a, a shaved face. I mean, mustaches too. Cause like there are some parts of the world where even still today, like every male, if you, if you want to be a man, you gotta have a mustache. Yeah. I was, I was actually thinking about this the other day. You know how, when they like in the old, old days, like Mongols and stuff, like they would slaughter all the boys who had uh, like, if they had hairy armpits, that was meant that they could be soldiers and killed them. Like that's what separated them from children to adults. I didn't know I've that. Never heard that. Yeah. I think I think it's that. Um, but that probably has something in relation to beards. So like, there could have been dudes who got invaded so many times that just anyone with good, like, hair growing always got slaughtered. So they just all kind of had shitty beards. So they just. Either that or, if you, or shitty... if you had a good beard, they were like, yeah, we want to absorb you into our horde and you will be a member of our, our fighting crew. And then if you don't have a beard, we're going to kill you. Hmm. I, I It's an interesting thing. Like, are humans getting hairier or less hairier? I think yeah. less hairier. Yeah. So it might be the maybe having a beard is a detriment. I might be on the right side of evolution. You never know. It would be cool to do a macro just on different hairstyles throughout throughout history and like why they became so commonplace like yeah dude the C you know why men have short hair because the caesar's pop caesar the julius caesar the caesar haircut the roman legion haircut was because in battle like long hair was just so easy to grab and cut your head off like they were just they realized all these like barbarian dudes like viking type guys in like gaul and like Europe that Rome was invading all had this long, pretty hair, like the, the Celts. Um, um, so they would, they would grab their hair and just slit their throats. It's like, it was like an easy way. There's also so a different answer for that. It's, it's like uh, <laughs> NFL players wearing like the tightest uniforms possible. So you can't get tackled. Yeah. It also, yeah, exactly. it also says that shorter men's ha hairstyle started with world war one and the need to eliminate lice on troops. Oh, the military haircut. And the style was emulated there. by Hollywood as the new norm. So, like in the Civil War, were, were all those dudes rolling around with long hair? Yeah, dude. Look up uh, any one of those dudes. They Ulysses long hair S. Grant. Beards. I'm seeing everything is associated with cropped hair is associated with traditional mil military. Well, Billy, if that was true, then what you just said wouldn't be true. No, it's absolutely true. The Caesar hairstyle. Okay, but then the you Caesar just hairstyle. said look up any of the dudes from the Civil War and they have long hair. I know, but they didn't like a lot of them had longer hair a lot of so it, they can't also both be true so i think that explains why in rome all the men had short hair yeah yeah because they all had to serve in the roman army yeah and in braveheart everybody had long hair barbarians and then all chinese people used to have ponytails and then i think when the mongols took over they made it illegal to have to have a ponytail and uh went around just chopping chopping it off damn that would suck we should yeah. do an Dude, episode on, yes. on different hairstyles and facial um, hairstyles actually in World. tajikistan it's pretty much against the law to have a beard uh because when they took over it it was a very muslim country and they were like we're gonna make this more of a communist country than a muslim country so like now when you see people rocking a beard they just assume oh that means he must be really muslim and like, I guess sometimes there's vans that will just like pull up. People will hop out, shave off their beard, hop back in the van and take off. Damn. It's like hold you down while they chop it off. Damn. Uh, Jeez. Okay. Well, Don't yeah, they well, also like steal wives? That's Turkmenistan. Yeah. Okay. Like, that's actually like the accepted practice of finding a wife. You have to kidnap her. Are you serious? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, dude. There, there's like, like it, there's videos. In Borat, that's what he tried to do to Pamela Anderson. 
Yes. He snuck yeah. up on her and put her in a so, sack. So, yeah. So, I mean, Borat's from Kazakhstan. They don't yeah. kidnap wives there. But in Turkmenistan, I think, um, yeah, like bride kidnapping is a thing. Has it become like a uh, like a, a cute thing where a or guy and a girl love each other very much? They know they want to get married. And she's like, oh, t- today's the day where he's going to come kidnap me. And they have it like prearranged. No, no. There's It's all your buddies in a car, drive by, all hop out grab them i saw a video it was absolutely terrifying it's actually kyrgyzstan i believe yeah oh yeah no it's saying right here Um, yeah it's bride kidnapping is practiced in kyrgyzstan um and uh some sources suggest that currently at least a third of kyrgyzstan's brides are taken against their will holy shit (laughs) It's it's like in the rural populations, but it is. Shout out Kyrgyzstan. Uh, some of my best friends who are boxers are from currently reside there. But also maybe Sh- chill out, out on the wife kidnapping. I think he fights. He just beats up any wife kidnappers that he sees. Look, nice. He's I, like I, Batman. I'm sure of that. Yes. He's like Liam Neeson for the entire country. Yeah, mm-hmm. he is. But uh, yeah, it's it's wild. Literally, I saw a video where there's just this woman walking with like her friends and then just a Toyota Tundra, no, uh, a Toyota pickup truck with a bunch of dudes in the back. They all just hop out, grab her, throw her in the back and drive away. And then everyone's like, oh, and they're like celebrating at the same time. But she's like, ah, and it's like, what the hell is happening? How did the, how that did was the, the most confusing wedding day? How did Toyota become the official truck of just like problem squadrons overseas? Like warlords well, they, always are pushing a Toyota. It's the AK-47 of trucks. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're very Cheap reliable trucks, very durable. And, like, maybe Japan is more willing to, like, sell to whoever wants their cars. Maybe the U.S. won't sell cars to certain countries. To warlords? Yeah. Yeah. Toyota should make it a commercial out of that. But, actually, I think it just be, might be Toyota Tundra's last so long that, yeah. like, the terrorist groups buy them secondhand off other people. And yeah. They, they can still use them. Yeah, they're always rocking like a white Toyota. I don't know what that it's is. It's pretty wild. Like I saw this one uh, picture of a landscaping truck that just had a giant machine gun in the back, and ISIS had somehow gotten a hold of this guy's truck that he sold back to the dealership. And he was like, "What the fuck? They didn't take the they didn't take the decal off the side." <laughs> oh wait, it was just like his landscaping company. Yeah, yeah. It's oh my God. probably got a good Sean's deal on it. Lawns. Rico Bosco's Staten Island <laughs> no, landscape. No. PFT, you're right, though. If Toyota had balls, they would run commercials being like, why are no other brands durable enough to be used by terrorists? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah when it absolutely must start. This 2002 Tundra is still rolling around <laughs> Afghanistan. Yeah. And a, a 2016 Actually, Ford is broken down on the side of I-75. It survived three suicide bombings, and it still yep. runs like a dream. Yep. <laughs> Honestly, they could do... They could do a similarly uh, themed commercial where they have a guy who's get buys his first truck and then, you know, he's working and everything Then one day he like sells the truck and he becomes more and more successful buying new trucks. And then he goes on a trip to a foreign country uh, like safari or something, or, you know, he goes to Turkey and then he sees his old truck and he's like, Oh my God, it's la- it still runs. This was my truck. And that would be like an endearing story about how <laughs> long the trucks lasted yeah but he has to steal it back from the terrorist organization Mm -hmm. like they've taken my truck and they're making it do unspeakable things i need to rescue my truck that's a country song right there yeah that'd be a a great movie too like oh i'm I'm beat off trucks dude where's my truck (laughs) i'm i'm beat off and has to do with automobiles okay we need to figure out why there aren't more diesel engined cars in the United States. I think there's an active big auto, maybe big oil cooperation to keep diesel cars, you know, passenger vehicles off the road because diesel engines in these passenger cars are sick and they're pretty awesome. And I think they're actually cheaper uh, per mile. I don't correct me on that. If I'm I, wrong. I don't know the the reason, but I do know that in like the 80s and 90s, we made a concerted switch to move over off diesel. I remember my grandmother had a diesel car where every time we would go to the gas station, we'd make sure to have to, to pull into the diesel gas pump. But um, 
at some point there was like definitely a, a choice that we made as a country to get off diesel. I don't know what the answer to that is though. I never looked into it. Is it worse for the environment? Like burning diesel as opposed to uh, burning normal gas? It might be. Um, so long-term fuel savings. Uh, okay. Okay. Actually it has to do with the market. Um, Americans can't do the math and grasp the concept of long-term fuel savings over <laughs> instant gratification and lower initial prices. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. We're just too stupid to know the reasons why diesel is more. We're too stupid to, <laughs> to fix. Yeah, we want, we want it now. It's like, yeah. would you rather have $5 now or $500 two years from now? Has the IQ of America gone down? I don't think no, so. No, it's gone. I think it's gone up. Up tremendously. So maybe, you know, if you're doing a, you're going to do some business moves, bring back diesel. Maybe we're finally ready. What yeah. I heard was Billy hates Americans and thinks they're dumb. Yeah. Particularly voters. <laughs> I heard that I'm too. Just saying, well, it might be good I'm, for him. I was, reading, I was reading what it said <laughs> online. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's also just a great excuse anytime somebody catches you. So I was just reading the internet. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for reading the internet. So Billy, are you a proponent of things that cause more pollution? It doesn't cause more pollution. According yeah. to whom? Uh, diesel engines produce less CO2 pollution. Oh, that's correct. Right, and correct. And more, uh, nitrogen pollution, correct? Which isn't, contri which isn't a greenhouse gas from what I remember. But anyway, I believe that's um, why there are fewer you, diesel cars if, is honestly, they wanted okay, you know to what, get you know, away. No more questions about my belief system. If you're interested in my policy points and, uh, congressional run go to bill carter for congress.com no, it should be her. live by now i'm i might have announced right by now so if you have any questions about any of my policy points please reference that website bill carter for congress that rolls off the tongue dot com is it for or for the bill number carter for congress it's not secure it tells me <laughs> google tells me this is not a secure website i'm a, I, i'm currently attending uh just real quick it's diesel engines produce more nitrogen oxide pollution whereas gasoline engines produce more co2 pollution u.s agencies targeted the former more than the latter and as a result had more stringent diesel restrictions and more lenient gasoline restrictions than most european union countries okay so now i guess we just have to figure out which is worse nitrogen or, or nitrogen's carbon. fine um, I, I think Billy, I do. I, I got a question about your excursion here in Iceland. Um, have you stopped uh -huh. by the penis museum yet? I, oh my you know, God. There's tons of I've penises everywhere, and I didn't understand why. And uh, Wait, that there's makes just sense a lot of a penises museum. around Iceland. So you're, I, I mean, you're I, like in the. <laughs> how many penises have you seen? I went to. They do have a penis museum and there's a lot of penises there, but I wasn't just seeing penises around <laughs> Iceland. Sorry if I cut you guys off. I can't see you guys, so I can't tell when you're starting to talk. Um, no, so like at the gift shop, uh, there's just uh, – thank you. What's up, guys? Sorry. Um, I thought it was the camera. That That is my that is my fault. No, no worries. No worries. Um, no, so I'm just like in the gift shop, right? And uh, they have Viking figurines. They have like cool things, axes. And then there's just these little penis figurines. And I'm just like, all right. I mean, it, so by the way, there's still people in Iceland who worship uh, the Nordic gods. Like, I think it's like a good 14% of the population. Hmm. Um, but it's a magical place. I mean, when you show up and there's just like steam coming out of the ground and like giant walls of ice moving actively, uh, like you're seeing science in real time, which probably makes you believe in anything. But so, back to the penises. Uh, I thought they're. I was worshiping the penises. I mean, I. What? what? They, 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 <laughs> I thought they were worshiping the penises. Clipped. Have you worshipped any penis while you're over there? Mm. Strong man cock. No, I tried to pick strong up man cock is actually the first strong guy man. that signed the uh, the Declaration of Independence for Iceland. Strong man cock. <laughs> yeah, strong man cock. Big signature, big um, old cock. He signed it with his dick. No, but it's actually wild. If they were picking up 400 pound stones, I tried. I, I couldn't do it. All right? Held no, up. Back not, to the, back to the penises, Billy. Where, you've been seeing penises not all- a Viking. You've been seeing penises everywhere? 
I'm just an overpowered Irishman, not a Viking. So I, I concede there. Also, straight up, Iceland is like 40% Irish by DNA amongst locals because they straight up like took a bunch of slaves from Ireland. Like, there, you know, if, if we're looking, talking reparations, like oh, the, Iceland owns oh, Ireland here reparations. We here we like, go. Think about that. Yeah, actually, think the Irish that. were the first slaves. Yeah. Well, to, to Iceland, dude, literally, they would just Is go when they're coming from Norway or most were from uh, Norway. They'd come pick up wives and slaves in Ireland and take them to Iceland. And this place is just like, it's Ireland kind of with a little more magic. Okay. So are you going and to go to the penis museum? I, I, I ran out of time to be honest. I think you should go to the penis museum. I think people want to hear about the penis museum. All those in favor of Billy going to the penis museum, raise your hand. One, two, I don't, three, I don't have time. Four. Big T says all, no. I don't really care what all, he does with his penis. It was one of the highlights <laughs> of, 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 of my trip there. They have all different types of penises. A bunch of whale they, cocks. There's variety. I thought it was a pretty homogenous nation. No, they have like animals and stuff. The penises of like oh. a, a hundred, a hundred different animals. It's not like a human penis now museum. Yeah, that would be. Oh, really I'm now I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like if we're looking at other types of penises. So you're intrigued by looking at animal penises. Yeah, science. I'd say he's excited by it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, I mean, ducks, bro. You hear about duck penises? The, oh, like yeah. literally duck sex life is just an arms race. And like, do have you ever seen like whales? They have, they look, the, the inspiration for like sea uh, monsters was whale penises because they move like an extra arm like they're prehensile just imagine in like three months yeah. there's a republican congressional debate on <laughs> yes. local cable access <laughs> and someone else is talking about billy's love for whale penises duck penises are i'm just wild, talking though. science they have like a duck can launch its cock and the cock is like five times longer than its body yeah and then it has a barb at the end and it needs to like the barb needs to latch on to the woman yeah it is, is a it, female duck it's like a corkscrew yeah if you could upgrade what feature would you add that's not just like i would not want a barbed 20 foot penis that i could like launch at people if you were to upgrade a penis like if a penis were to have like a like a, wings or something yeah wings so it could fly <laughs> No, no, no. I, no, I mean, saying, there's, a, there's a, a, a correct answer to this. He was saying if you could have What's one animal attribute, I guess. Are you saying one animal attribute or if you could add one feature to your cock? A anything. I mean, the answer is like that it, that it vibrates, that it shakes. Vibrating cock. That's the, that's the correct answer. Huh. What about you, Billy? Uh, I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. You just asked the question. I know I asked it, but I didn't think about the, like my answer. I'm, I just threw it out there. Okay. Elephant cocks apparently uh, can't fit in the female elephant vagina. So they just uh, line up and then like squirt a gallon of jizz all over the vagina, but they don't actually penetrate. <laughs> That's very inefficient. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading Quart right now um, 10 animals with the largest junk to body ratio. Oh, you guys, true. You guys is know what, true? what number one is? A shrew. Is it a type yeah. of duck? It's a bad answer. It's a bad answer, but it's oh. a barnacle. And oh, yeah. A barnacle's penis is eight times longer than its body. So it's just a penis. The entire animal is a penis. Um, squids, the greater hooked squid has a one-to-one -one penis to body ratio, 26 mm -hmm. inches for each one. Um, the Argentine lake duck also yeah. has a one-to-one -one penis to body ratio. Ducks are just swinging hammers. Yep. Uh, African elephants hmm. have a 1.3 to 1.4, so almost a one to one. That's the craziest one to me. Is that an elephant's an penis el is yeah. almost as long as its body? And then blue whales have a two to two, uh, two to 2.5. What? But a blue whale can be like 100 feet long. So does that mean? Like um. Okay. So this might be two to 25. This might oh, be. Okay. Yeah. It's it's an eight foot. Eight foot cock okay. for blue whales. Tapers have a one to four, so pretty big, pretty big hog on those hogs. Uh, sea turtles one to five, pigs one to five, Whoa. cattle three to twenty. Uh, all right, well that was fun. 
Humans are pretty high compared to other primates. Yeah. Yeah. Gorillas have tiny dicks, right? Mm. Yeah. Chimps too. Mallard ducks though. I, I think they don't have a penis at all. <laughs> they just have like a patch. They just, yeah. have, they just have a little patch and they rub their patch on the woman's patch. That's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. They just what scissor. do you, Donnie, what do you think would have happened if we flashed the gorillas? With our cocks? Like what? I would, they, would they have been intimidated by you? Or? I don't think they would have cared. As long as we weren't making direct eye contact. They would just be like, all right, that's fucking weird. Billy, do you think they would have respected you as their leader? <laughs> because they're like, hey. Yeah, because like gorillas aren't March used to clothes. So if, they, if gorillas ran into a group of humans walking naked in the jungle, that would probably be just as normal to them as humans walking around wearing clothes <laughs> what if you sh what if you shook your junk at them <laughs> would they get mad intrigued i think they would immediately surrender to you <laughs> they would tell their kids about the story of this one gorilla this albino gorilla that came to the jungle one day yeah. that had a, a, a dick three times the size of theirs <laughs> and they like come and try to attack you they probably try to defend their their they're women harem. They'd probably rip it off. Troop. Oh, yeah. They'd be that, so intimidated probably, by you. That that's hilarious. Yeah. So Billy, go to the go to the penis museum. I will. I want a full report. Oh, I thought you didn't have enough time, Billy. I'm. J I think it might be open twenty four seven. It's probably one of those places that it's open twenty four seven. The penis right? museum. I don't know if it is. The penis museum. Is, I, I feel. I feel like who's it's like, going? It's to like the a penis waffle house. At, <laughs> But like, who's going in at like 9 a.m.? Like, they definitely have hours that like are like, oh look, penis museum. We're drunk. They probably get more drunk people late at night, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't know the know. answer to that. But I, was, I want you to yeah, find out. Like... I want you to find out all these answers for us, and okay. we'll, we'll discuss later. Uh, so you were announcing your campaign. I'm excited about that, Billy. When is the announcement's coming today? It might. I, I hopefully we. I gotta do some editing. Okay. All right, we're still we're still yeah. full steam ahead on the campaign. I need to. I had. I have to go through. I'm not seeing I, your website. Yeah, your website's not. Up it's yet. probably it's probably not up yet while we're recording this. Did you make your own we're, website? We're I hope not. How hands on were you in the development of this website? Look, man. You know, uh, I saw an opportunity to serve. This is uh, an easy question. The How constituency. I. I. I Saw the opportunity to serve uh, the constituency Did you make your own and website? the country, and I'm taking advantage of it as much as I can. And I'm getting like I will in my uh, service in Congress. I will get who the best made the website, Billy, to help advise me to do the best things. Did you so have? Did it's, you help design your own website? Yes, I helped design my own website. Okay, all right, good. It's I'll, it's fine if you didn't. Like I'm sure Trump and Biden did not make their own websites. Or, I'm, I'm we're looking at banners and stuff. Okay, come on. Okay. All right. Yeah, Billy. Um, I have a great group of guys. The the best, the best, and the smartest people. So it's you or the group of guys, dude. It's it's a team effort, and teamwork is what I'm trying to bring to Congress. Something that they probably haven't experienced in a while. <laughs> How right. diverse is your cabinet? Good question. Extremely. I haven't put. It, I don't have a cabinet. Uh, okay. I meant like your campaign team. Not very diverse. Okay. Just the best people. Some have brown hair. Some have light brown hair. <laughs> One person has black hair. Anyway, we're. Are there any Italians in your in your group? I I don't see Italians. <laughs> I don't see Italian. <laughs> I don't see. Ita <laughs> I don't see whether people are Italian or not. Because the Italians, I just see there's a lot of Italians on Long Island, Billy. You might want to, you know, make sure that you're representing the demographic of your island properly. It's not my island. Why do why do uh, why do Italians and Irish have a big about, rivalry? If, if you have any questions about my candidacy, please check out BillCotterForCongress.com. I'm sure I'm going to buy Will Cotter for Congress, <laughs> and I'm going to redirect it to the guy we found the other day that Billy's running against who, like, served 20 years in the Special Forces and has five oh, no. degrees from Harvard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And I'm going to redirect it to his website. And I'm going to tell everybody to go to WillCotterForCongress.com. Will Cotter, question mark? <laughs> Will he? Um, I have a dude of the week. 
I have a macrodosing dude of the week. Do you guys want to hear about him? Yes. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's Jacques Lucerian. I think that's right. He's a French guy. And he was born in 1924. And uh, he... He got blinded when he was in elementary school. So he was seven years old, and he became blind in an accident. I don't really know how he got blinded. Um, but so he, he learned how to adapt to being blind, which, by the way, I would, I would rather be born with sight and then become blind than be born blind. So you can have just like a frame of reference mm-hmm. of the world and what people are talking about. But um, he, he got really interested in European politics at the time uh, because Hitler was rising to power, and he was in France. And this guy was like, from a French point of view, he's like, this Hitler guy seems very dangerous. And so he taught himself German so that he could listen to Hitler's speeches growing up. And he became fluent in German. And uh, once Germany invaded France, this blind guy, Jacques Lucerian, he became one of the leaders of the French resistance, even though he was blind. Holy and shit. so he was like going around on trains, passing out leaflets. And it's got to be terrifying to be like a leader of the resistance and trying to avoid like actual Nazi, like, SS agents and trying to figure out who you can talk to and who you can't if you're blind. And he was one of the most successful leaders of the French resistance until he was captured in, uh, 1943, the Gestapo got him. And, uh, they, he got betrayed by one of his best friends named Elio that he worked with. Oh shit. Um, the ice man. And was he killed? I know he was put into a prison camp and he survived. He was one of the only people that survived in the Buchenwald concentration camp um, as like a prisoner of war. And then later as just a, uh, just a, I don't think they made any distinction between like a prisoner of war and anyone else that they wanted in there. So he was in there for a while. He didn't have to do any of the manual labor because he was blind and they thought that they couldn't use him. So like played up him being blind, be like, Oh, I can't do anything. I can't help. And then he eventually uh, was liberated. And then he moved to the United States and taught, taught French lit and wrote books uh, for the next like 30 years until he died. But shout out to Jacques Lucerian, a, a blind guy, macrodosing dude of the week, blind guy that helped lead the French resistance. Yeah. It sounds like a, uh, a character in like a play. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm shocked there's not a movie about him. Yeah, they use, there should be. So apparently when they were going around, like they were boarding all these trains and they were passing out these leaflets trying to get people to join the resistance, they had tear gas pens that they would keep on them in case they were ever like apprehended. They could squirt tear gas on the person and try to get away uh so yeah this this guy kind of rocked i was thinking like if more europeans had just read mein kampf they would have like known exactly what hitler was going to do because he laid it all out in in that book yeah he was like my goal is to like capture most of eastern europe so germans have more living space i want to kill all the jews Mm -hmm. and like I can't attack Eastern Europe before I neutralize France and England. Like mm-hmm. he laid it all out, but he still let that's it one of those books that you kind of can't read. You got to um, get the yeah. Kindle. It, what, you, yeah. you got to get the Kindle version of it. You, you can, or, yeah, you can't have it like on your bookshelf or like carrying it with you on the subway. <laughs> yes, like there's probably some stuff that would be important to read in there to just for a further understanding of the context of history. Like it's a primary source, and so you. A lot of historians have to read it, but you got to be very, very, very judicious about where you read that book. Yes. Like, Billy, if I saw you reading that book, that would... I would be like, nope, that's a, that's an issue. I, I, yeah, that's why I've never read that book. I, I have not <laughs> read the, the whole book. I've read the Spark Notes version. That's a big ask to ask all of Europe to read that book. Well, no, but that was, yeah, just... If the thing is, have, at that time, uh, I think like after Hitler like came to power, and they were like, "Who is this guy?" Maybe they should have had their intelligence like read the book and be like, "Oh shit, this guy's trouble." Well, um, I mean, the thing is, what people don't talk about, we, France loves to talk about the French resistance, but they don't talk about the French like embrace thing of the Germans who came in. Oh, they v- were literally Vichy like, France. Yeah, yeah, Vichy France Vicky. and like the guy who is a World War One war hero, General. just being like, "Yo, these guys are dope. Like, their 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 ideas are awesome." Who like there was a lot of very sympathetic. I think the majority of France was just kind of like, "Yeah, fine." I don't know if it was the majority or not, but their their leader, yeah, he was a, a World War Two or World War One hero, and he yeah. like he led France in some of the biggest battles of all time. 
and he was known as being like a national icon. And then he ended up volunteering himself to be the president of France during German occupation. And he was just like kissing the Germans ass and being like, yeah, I'll do whatever you say, Hitler. No problem. No problem. And then after France was liberated, they, they caught the guy and they killed him. Yeah. And I, I think maybe for a lot of the French, it was just like, they just didn't want to be in battle again. They were like, cause like France was so scarred from world war one. They're like, yeah. Oh shit. Well, we've already been overran. We can just like try to fight it out. But it's just like, I think they were just so shell shocked from world war one. Still. They're like, no, we don't want a repeat of this. We're just going to surrender. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were kind of that way for a long time too in world war two. Well, th that it's not that we were shell shocked. It was just like, this is a European problem. Like yeah. why get involved? Like we didn't even want to get involved in world war one. And then like, we finally came in at the very end. Yeah. We were, we were giving um, a bunch of arms and, and money to the British to help them fight the Nazis. Yeah. And we were just trying to stay out of, it. I think FDR even promised like, it's not our problem. We're going to stay out of it as much as we can, but we're going to support our allies. And then, then Pearl yeah. Harbor happens. I highly recommend reading the book, The Gathering Storm, which Churchill wrote after World War II. And it's all about the, like how they got from World War I to World War II. And the whole time as like Germany starts secretly rearming, like Churchill's trying to warn the British, like, hey, we like, we need to start to rearm too. Cause like Germany's actually building up their armed forces and stuff. And no one will really listen to him. Like France and England were just dead set on peace. And they were like, no, we need to de-arm. That's the solution mm -hmm. to like continued peace. So we just like get rid of our arms, like stop building airplanes. And for like 10 years, Churchill's like, I'm telling you guys in like five years, this is going to be a huge problem. And then like, he keeps on telling them again and again, as Germany like makes moves, like they first, um, what was their first move? Oh, they moved back into the Rhineland and then yeah. Czechoslovakia. Sudetenland. And he's like, we need to stop them now because if we let this go on for another six years, then at that point, Germany's already like, they're going to be rearmed and they'll be a lot harder to fight. Yeah, that's when Chamberlain did the he, the appeasement. That was his strategy. Like, yeah. just appease Hitler and he'll stop. Yeah. And then Hitler invades Poland. And now it's like, okay, well, Fuck. it's on. Yeah. So it, you, like I mean, the whole book is just Churchill calling his shot. He's like, if we don't do this now in 1935, then in 1941, we're going to have a huge war in our hands. And like, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. I mean, when Russia moved into Crimea, same vibes. Yeah. And now look where, now they went into all of Ukraine. Yeah. I mean, we're uh, scary to think about. Yeah. And we got 25 years of Putin just got re ups off of uh, like, th like, what's the point of studying history if we're not <laughs> applying it to the world around us? So do, you're advocating for, as a, in your role in Congress, you're advocating for sending troops into Ukraine to stop the next Hitler? No, no. Just, just gotta recognize patterns. And patterns it, are important. In what way? Um, I mean, who knows? Moldova's maybe next. So we should stop them, is what you're saying? Well, cat's out of the bag. Um, you just go to Billy's did, website. Is Ryan Rus <laughs> is Ryan Rusillo <laughs> is Ryan Rusillo Icelandic? <laughs> I don't know. I think he's probably Italian. I know he's Italian, but the way he spells Ryan is weird, and yeah, I, he's probably Icelandic. Do you want me to ask so him? He, was, he, he just texted me, "Yo." You need any Iceland tips, and I was like, "Oh, ask him if he's this guy." Ask him if he's Icelandic. Yeah, that could be why he benches so high. <laughs> I love that Billy's just going to apply this knowledge to like everyone that he knows. Are you part Icelandic? You're pretty strong. Uh, all I'm right, not strong. Anything else we want to jump into before we start talking about the uh, suppression of free energy conspiracy? Big T. You teed off about anything? This one goes deep. Uh, no, just Billy telling me I was wrong <laughs> when I wasn't. I've been watching the uh, the octopus conspiracy on Netflix, which we'll discuss next week. Wild story. So start, I, I will admit, that. Big T was not wrong. Thank you. Okay. Progress. Have you tried any whale meat while in Iceland? 
No, but I did get some reindeer meat. Okay, that's not as cool. How was no, it? No, still just a hoofed creature. Yeah. Was it good? It was. Was it reindeer sausage? Every, the fish here is the fish here is amazing. It's this place is pretty awesome. Oh, have you seen oh, any wow. any puffins? I no. I tried I some puffin one. meat when I was there. Oh, really? Yeah, I got to eat puffin whale and then fermented shark, which is that really gross shit. Have you ever? Oh heard? yeah, yeah. I think like Vibs brought some into the office once. Yeah, it's it's similar to like lutefisk. Yes. Where they bury it underground or something, and they yeah. let it rot for a while. Yep. It's basically a test to see if you can if you can eat it. Yeah, just rotten shark. That was the most disgusting thing I think Vibs ever did to us. That and the spicy gummy bear. Spicy gummy bear fucked me up for about a, a full day afterwards. Did you have like spicy diarrhea? Uh, or no, my I it wasn't spicy diarrhea. I just felt like I had to poop for about twenty four hours. You Jeez. couldn't poop, and then my stomach was hurting. It was fucked up, Vibs. Dude, those spicy challenges, because it's not over after the spice is gone. No. It's not. It's like sweating overnight. Oh, man. Yeah, but Bill, I need you to see a puffin. Puffin, I. it might be one of my favorite birds. I saw a puffin, a stuffed puffin. They're selling them here. It's a, You can't bring it back to the States, though, because of sights. Like a, a stuffed actual puffin. Do you want me to buy a stuffed puffin for you? No, I, just I don't want... know if I can get it back to the country. No, no I just want you to see a, I want you to see a bird. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go see that bird for me. Tell I say hi. At what age do people get get into bird watching or birding? Excuse me, they call it birding. My, it's it snuck know. up on me. I'm I'm not quite there yet. Uh, I know my mom has gone on a couple birding trips. Um, I mean I don't like I do enjoy seeing birds, but I'm never gonna like plan out a day being like, hey, we can go to this park and go birding for these types of birds. And then you see, and then you just like check it off the list, like saw that bird. Yeah, maybe take a picture. Um, it sounds like golf trips just for people that are into, into yeah. like nature more, where it's like, okay, we're going to plan a vacation. We're going to go see this bird today, and then tomorrow we're going to see this bird. I mean, I get do like – Yeah. Talk about the birds that we saw, the birds we almost Dude, saw. Have you, have you seen a real raven? I have we, I don't know. Maybe Have we only been seeing fake ones? Yeah, I've seen ravens, but now now I'm questioning that. No, dude, these the ravens here are huge. Huge ravens. The birds are pretty interesting because Iceland didn't have uh Iceland only had one type of mammal living on it, uh the arctic fox until humans arrived, so the birds have just been running rampant here and there's some pretty cool looking birds. I love ravens. But love, the ravens are huge. I love crows. They look like bigger than crows. I want to I really want to get like a murder of crows to accept me as like one of their friends. I've watched some yeah, start videos. Just feeding them. Yeah, I've watched some videos on YouTube about how to how to get involved in a murder. Um, it sounds bad when you phrase it that way, but <laughs> like how to have a murder accept you, and uh, you got to start feeding them at like the same time every day, but you can't like directly approach them, and eventually they'll learn to trust you. And crows are like sneaky, one of the most intelligent animals on yeah. planet Earth. Like they're Someone... really smart. They have, you know, that crows have funerals. Wow. Yeah. Like I did they, not know that. They they mourn if a member of their their murder dies and they'll mourn for like a period of days or weeks and they have like rituals that they do. They so, seem like the funeral birds. They yeah, that yeah. fits them. Very somber. Yeah. And they uh they will adopt you and they'll protect you too. And they'll protect your things if you become like a friend of theirs. So they'll like fight off other species if they start to encroach on your territory. I want to become a friend of the birds. Yeah, right here it says crows one, and ravens, number six in world's smartest animals. One uh, guy like was posting about how he was he basically trained crows or ravens, I forgot which it was, to bring him money. And he was feeding them and they were like giving him money. Somehow he trained it. It might have been a fake story, but I kind of see how it could happen. Well, they could easily, he, yeah, they could go out and find coins and if someone left yeah. a, a dollar bill. Mm-hmm. Or How? they might be able to swoop in and just like, while someone's paying, come down and grab a few notes. Now, could you be charged for theft? Yeah, I think if you like encourage and train a, a, a raven to steal cash from other people, I think you'd probably be but, charged with that. But what if you didn't know how he was stealing it and he was giving you money? <laughs> you thought the crow was just paying you for commerce. You thought the crow had a job. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I, that could be your defense. Yeah. How, how could you train a bird to give you money without like knowing that it was just going to take money from somewhere though? I don't know. You could just train them to like pick up money around the house or around your property. If and crow, be like, oh, if crows were really smart, then they could frame humans and they could just start. They getting... frame cats. What? They frame cats. A crow will pick a fight. will make two cats fight just by pretending the other cats attacking them. That and they'll rocks. watch and they'll cackle while they fight. They, they like stage fights and then they watch them just like we would watch a boxing match. Yeah, but it's more like when you pit two people against each other by like saying they did something like, oh, he's, you heard what he said about his mom, your mom, and then they mm -hmm. like start fighting and then you watch him. Yeah, shout out, shout out crows. Anything else we want to get into before free energy conspiracy? Big T, you teed off about anything? Oh, no. <laughs> Donnie, anything else? I think I'm good for now. Anything on your mind? All right. Um, yeah. All right. Any Tennessee minute updates? I guess we can't really do a Tennessee minute update they, until the game. They, they've practiced, I believe. Yeah. They, okay. What is the practice situation with teams at the NCAA tournament? Like, do they are they given access to the gym that they're going to be playing in? But yes. It's only like a certain amount of time. Yeah, I think like the day before each team gets an hour or something. And they have to share the facilities with all the other teams that are there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm sure they all go to like a local college or something to have other practice too. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I want to say this on the pod. No, I'll, I'll allude to it. Uh, Rico may have helped me help JMU with a gym in Brooklyn. Love that. So Rico came to me after he found out like when the team's going to be practicing or when the team's going to be playing. And Rico pulls me aside and he's like, Hey, just so you know, I got a great gym. I got two great gyms. It's fantastic. And, uh, and obviously that's my, not his gym my initial react well his guy's gym and no it's dana's gym who dana are you are we talking about the same gym yeah i that's where we practiced for is it the gym where like opposing teams that are playing the knicks or the nets where they practice yeah okay well yeah well rico said he had access to this thing and Rico's normally taking responsibility for dana's I don't know, but nor up. normally when Rico tells me something like that, my, my response will be to like smile, nod politely. Thank you, Rico. But then he was like, no, I know that like sometimes I, I bullshit you, but like I'm dead <laughs> serious about this. And I was like, okay. And so I, I ended up putting Rico in touch with like JMU's director of basketball operations. And I think they're going to use Rico's hookup mm -hmm. oh, to practice. Oh, the, the Dobo. That's Rico's favorite thing to say. The Dobo? Yeah. Director of basketball operations. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't. I can't Dobo. keep track of it. I talked to the Dobo yesterday. I can't keep the track Dobo. of his fucking acronyms. Um, so R Rico's passed off Dana's guy as his guy? That's so funny. Well, then Big Cat tried to claim that it was his guy that Rico was passing off. It is It is his guy. It's Dana and Big Cat's guy. Okay. Well, yeah, at any rate, I'll take it. One it was, thing. It was very helpful of him, though. But, yeah, it's, Rico, he, he did me a solid. thought he was more of an App State guy. Or Marshall? Uh, both, actually. Marshall Marshall, Marshall mostly. Uh, he does not respect JMU basketball or football. But that's another story. One uh, small thing to add. I know you guys – talked about Haiti on the pod maybe last week or something mm -hmm. I guess mm -hmm. Kenya is is they're gonna send in like a 1,000 person strong peacekeeping force really yeah like I'm not sure how that fell on Kenya but they're I think they volunteered they're like we can help and yeah. like uh, they're sending in like a thousand soldiers to to try to like keep the peace and control the gangs Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't know how like how that would be beneficial for Kenya, or if they're just trying. I to think help. I think they're just trying to take more of like you know how the U.S. has taken a role as we're like the world's peacekeeper and mm -hmm. stuff, and we like to get involved because it helps. Like it also helps just expand U.S. power. Mm -hmm. I think they're like okay, we're we're like our country is stable enough. Now we want to exert some of our power and influence around the world. Interesting. I'm yeah. going. I'm going to a, a Haitian wedding on Friday, and so I've promised the guys that I'm going to come back with some facts about how they feel about the Clinton Foundation. Okay, it's hopefully not in Haiti, right? It's not in Haiti. Okay, no, it's in Brooklyn. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Um, huh. So that's interesting because, uh, like, 
you know, Thailand, everyone knows Thai food, right? Yeah. And uh, Thailand's government back in, I want to say like the 60s or 70s, they gave money to people to move to different parts of the world and start Thai restaurants to introduce people to Thai flavors and Thai style cooking as an effort to like expand their soft power across the world. Where now it's like we think of Thailand, most people in the United States are at least somewhat familiar with Thai food. People yeah. like Thai food. And so there's like a favorable impression of Thailand in people's brains. Whereas if you were to say like, what do you think about Laos? A lot of people are like, I don't really know that much about Laos. So Pad Thai is a government mm -hmm. op. It's a it's a Thai Psy government psyop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Stay woke. Haitian food's really good. It is so good. It's got a little hmm. je ne sais pas toi. <laughs> je ne sais pas toi. Where have you guys ever tried <laughs> Haitian food? Uh, it's like Creole food. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. So like Louisiana, their their food is like a mix of French, Southern, and Creole. Yeah. Which makes it so good. That makes sense. And then Mexican food is um, Aztec Spanish fusion. Yeah. If you think about it. So, and you know what's crazy about Spanish? It's like tapas. It's kind. Of, it's uh. It's kind of like North African european fusion mm -hmm. which is crazy to think about yeah it's a finish it's a fusion within itself if, if you have to buy stock in one food i would say buy your stock in shakshuka i was i was oh, just uh, talking to tj about this on the uh, mostly sports after show shakshuka the sky's the limit for shakshuka here in the united states like once once the girls at brunch figure out about shakshuka okay. it's over it's like poached eggs in uh, in a tomato garlic onion sauce. Yes, it is. It is an elite breakfast food. You I've know, had it before. What Do you like it? A, yeah, but I'm I'm not a huge fan. I don't like need a bunch of tomato sauce for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just bad for heartburn. It, but that, yeah, it it is very tasty though. It's extremely tasty. But I agree with you. Like tomato sauce early in the morning. Yeah, could be tough. I'd I'd invest in South African food, Nando's. Okay. Still, I think there's some in Chicago. Check it out. They yeah. do. It, it's it's very good. Um, Nando's, yeah. Piri Piri. Yes. Piri Piri. Is that where the first there's Nando's one was? Was it in South Africa? It was really hilarious. My friend had all these coworkers from the UK uh, coming to Chicago, and he was like, "Where should I take him out to eat?" And I was like, "You gotta take him to Nando's. It's like a great spot." But like, and he had no idea that it's like a fast food chain in the UK. So he went up to them and he was like, "You guys want to go to Nando's?" <laughs> like, it's like a crazy off the beaten path yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought it was some like unique place in Chicago. He could show him. I love that, and I also love their uh, their version of jerky is so good. Biltong. Oh yeah, Biltong's great. If you guys were to buy stock in one food that hasn't blown up yet in the United States, what would it be? Big T? I don't know. Like what hasn't blown up here? There's a lot of stuff. Well, you, have you been overseas? Yeah. Yeah. I went to London last summer. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Forget about that. I know it's your big European experience. Mm -hmm. Was there anything over there that you were like, you know what? I could get used to this. I'm not really. It wasn't that different. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like, if you've heard about it, then it's by definition blown up to some extent. Mm. Yeah. I'm not in the weeds like you with the shakshuka. Shakshuka. Yeah. You got you to gotta try shakshuka. You'd like it. I kind of just think like, you know how there was a crazy cupcake craze? And the, the, like I feel like on every block, there was a spot with like 40 different types of cupcakes. Frozen yeah. yogurt too. I like, I want to try to launch a spot for like, 20 different types of Rangoons. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So, but it'd be a similar layout to a cupcake shop, but it would just be Rangoons. Would you have like uh, different toppings on the Rangoons? Um, some could be, I think it'd be more just about what filling was inside them. So you could have like a carbonara Rangoon, mm -hmm. um, a spicy barbecue chicken Rangoon, but then like, and then a, a couple sweet dessert ones too. You're going to want to put, you're going to want to put like some sort of, either topping or, or dressing or uh, like uh, spice on the outside of them. So they look different. dipping sauce. Yeah. So yes. they looked at yeah. because you want to walk through that like a line and you're looking in, into the, like the glass uh, display case. Yes. And you're like, Oh, that one right there. That's the, um, 
That's a carbonara one because it's got shaved Parmesan on top of it. That yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, you could do that. And then you can also use different color wonton wrappers. Cause yeah. You, you can make like a, a, a green wonton wrapper for like the spinach and artichoke rangoon. It's all about making it good to take pictures of and post on Instagram. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exactly. really matter how it tastes. You can have a mystery box. Oh, mystery goon? A mystery, mystery box of goons. goons. Like, yeah. What's but in I the think goon? Rangoons are similar to a cupcake. Like, obviously... You don't want to just have rangoons as a meal, yeah. like. Um, but I mean, it's it's they're very rich, they're very they're very tasty. But like, you know, you probably only need to have like four of them. Even though I could sit down and eat twelve, mm -hmm. you'd probably be good if you just have like you just buy a little box of four really good rangoons. Yeah, rangoons to go, goons to go. I like that. All right, uh, Mad Dog McKenzie, you have any foods that you're buying stock in? Underrated foods that you love that you think will blow up i don't know i'm very basic when it comes to that sort of stuff so i wouldn't even know something that hasn't blown up yet um i'm trying to think oh i know i know one that you would approve of what pierogi oh I, oh yeah i i also didn't know that pierogies weren't a thing yeah. everywhere until i moved out of ohio yeah pierog that was news for me <gasps> wait this is what i was talking about today when i was getting lunch mckenzie do oh, you guys yes, know you what were. munchos are Nope. Nope. No. Mm -mm. Oh, I didn't. the best potato chip you will ever had. Look up what a muncho looks like. They're like porous potato chips. They are so salty, so crispy, like melt in your mouth. I take it back. I have seen these on some occasion. They are so good. They are actually probably the worst thing you could probably like eat, but it's crispy, salty, crunchy. Potato chips. I and mean, you're I, describing oh, yeah. a potato chip. No, but like extra <laughs> to the nth degree. And I could, in college, I would have munchos as like a hangover snack sometimes. And I would just get like a family size bag and absolutely demolish the whole bag. It was, they are so good. They've got a problem. The problem is with their marketing. What? Because I've seen this bag before. Yeah. Right. And the it's bag, not you, the like, bag looks like something they would give you with a dry turkey sandwich in prison. Mm -hmm. It it's looks like so they look like good. prison yeah. chips on the. Or outside. like they look like a knockoff of like a yeah. different brand. Yeah, it's a bad bag. They need a better bag. Do you know about the prison chips? <laughs> no. So there's yeah, a brand yeah, of yeah, chips, do. and I forget the name, but it's supposed to be like it's like every flavor in one, and people who have been to prison like say it's the best shit ever. <laughs> And like the, you can, they try to get them like when they leave. Are you talking about all dressed? The whole shebang. No. Yes. That's what that's I love it. too. Yeah, it's that. Ooh. And super large, seasoned large snacks. Brought them into the office. And people who have been to jail swear they're incredible. Wow. That's wild it's, that they make something only for jail. Yeah. Though. The whole. I'm shebang sure is it's like exclusive. a wholesale thing. No. It, it, check no. this out. The whole shebang is a brand of seasoned snacks made by the Keefe Group, a company that specializes in serving the prison population. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The whole shebang has garnered a cult following among former inmates as well as those who have never been incarcerated due to positive word of mouth, leading the company to sell them to the general public. I'm going to order some right now. The flavor is oft <laughs> often described as a hybrid between salt and vinegar and barbecue. Sold in mo um, sold in more mainstream retail channels, known in Canada as all dress. Oh, it is all dress. So I th I think it might be America's it's version known in of all Canada dressed. Is all dressed. Yeah, they also eat ketchup chips in Canada. Mm. Ketchup mm. flavored chips. Uh, but yeah, all dress is pretty good. Oh, all dressed is a type. Like multiple uh, Canadian places make all dressed. It's like a type of potato chip. It's not a brand. Um, Madeline, these munchos, is regular potato chips the only flavor they have? I've never seen a muncho that was not. Okay, that's what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Well. I've I'm never gonna, seen a, a variety of muncho I'm besides order original. Some. They are so good. I think they're one of my favorite potato chips. And I we got lunch catered today, and they had potato chips. And I was like, oh, these kind of remind me of munchos. And everyone looked at me like I had three heads. But, oh, they're so good. They're just so light and salty, and they make my lips chapped because there's so much salt on them. Mm. <laughs> but that's what I would like to bring to the mainstream. Oh, and PFT, one more. Mm -hmm. Pelmenis. 
What's that? Oh, pelmenis are great. The one I told you about, the little things that Russian I Russian dumplings. Yep. Oh, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Those are so good. I love, I love. Also, pierogi type food. Yeah. Yep. Pierogies are, are elite. Pelmeni is delicious, and I highly recommend and dipping it in sour cream. Clemmer won't eat any food that's, uh, he won't eat any sort of stuffed food. Huh. Because he likes only be like being able to see what he's eating. He doesn't like that. Like whatever's inside is hidden. So he won't eat food that's inside of another type of food. He doesn't like stuffed crust. No. Nope. What about turducken? He doesn't he like probably secrets. Would, he probably he would, doesn't he, like secrets. He would hate it's turducken. insane. He's an honest man. But like that is hands down my favorite type of food. Ravioli, mm -hmm. dumplings, rangoons, pierogies, empanadas. As long as you know explicitly what's in it. Right. Who cares? Burritos? Does he not eat burritos? I don't think he likes burritos. <laughs> burritos are more of an open book. Yeah, mott sticks. Some of the best foods are stuffed. Yeah. Now, stuffed donuts, I won't go near. I won't touch. What? Like Boston cream? Yeah. Off? No, a donut has to have a hole in it. When you start filling donuts with <laughs> shit, no thank you. Mm -mm. You don't like any stuffed donuts? No. Not even like the, uh, the light airy cream? No, I don't want any cream in the donut. Raspberry jelly? I always fuck up. It's a, It's been a lifelong battle I've been fighting where when I get like a cream filled donut, I always get the wrong type of donut. I always get like the custard filling and mm -hmm. I never want the custard exactly. filling. Exactly. It's I want, a secret. I want the, the What's white. What's in here? Find out. I want the white fluffy creamy feeling, fi filling. I don't want the, the yellowish mm, heavy yeah. shit. Can somebody please tell me what the difference between those donuts is so I don't make the same mistake well, again? Boston cream is Wait. always going to be the yellow. That's the Boston cream. Yeah. Okay. Boston cream is always the yellow stuff. Um, should we move on to the conspiracy? Yeah, let's talk about it. I've got four bags of munchos yeah. on the way here. Yes. Nice. Love it. Love it. That was quick. Uh, okay, the free energy suppression conspiracy theory. I'm excited about this. Have you ever seen the movie Chain Reaction with Keanu Reeves? Never heard of it. Okay, so it's about a scientist that discovers a way to turn water into pure energy, and then the powers that be come after him. And at one point, I think there's a nuclear explosion that he outruns on a bike or a motorcycle. Love that. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool movie. Um, so, uh, also shout out to Mike who's done a great job of doing our research for the last uh, what like two months, three months. If you've noticed us being more organized on the topics, it's all due to Mike who's been fantastic. Um, so according to the free energy suppression conspiracy, uh, viable alternative free energy sources that are environmentally friendly and cheap, they're suppressed by governments, corporations, and other powerful groups. Why would you do that? Uh, well, if you're making a lot of money off selling oil, if you're making a lot of money off selling other types of energy, you don't want the people to have as much energy as they can for free. So um, there's an economic status quo and fuel prices have only really gone up. When was the last time gas prices went down? Like if you look at it, you're not necessarily like month by month because there's fluctuations all the time. And th th those usually occur in election years for some reason. Weird. The pandemic. Remember when they were paying people to take oil? Oh yeah, yeah. Also energy um, prices go up sometimes so that you can afford to fire your head football coach if you're Texas A&M University and you're an Aggie and you just own a bunch of land that has that has oil on it. And so if the price of oil per barrel goes up, then you're you're able to afford a $90 million buyout. And also uh, have a suspicious deal with Qatar. Yeah, so go on about that, Big T. I don't remember all the specifics. That story went away suspiciously oh. quickly as well, but they have a like a real no. deal like partnership with uh I like the government of Qatar. The Emir I think Did so. I write yeah, this blog? he's as gracious as he you? is benevolent. Yep. Uh, yeah. So the, they've got like a, a real thing going on. I I don't know all the specifics, but it was a thing around the time Jimbo got fired. Yeah. So the the uh, theory that I had was that if oil, I, I set a price target that oil has to hit like ninety dollars a barrel for them to be able to afford Jimbo Fisher's buyout, and I think it got up to about ninety five, and then dipped back down. I think when they ended up firing him, it was like seventy bucks a barrel. Um, but that like a bunch of people in East Texas just own a fuckload of land with a fuckload of oil on it. And so they get so rich just when the price of oil goes up, that they're able, they don't have anything else to spend their money on. So like, we might as well, I don't like our football program. Let's fire our coach. 
That's so that's a, an awesome thing to have. It's just like no, you have so much money that you just declare yourself to be king of a football program. It's pretty awesome. It is pretty cool. So for the Qatar stuff, uh, this is uh, Texas A&M's press release. Several websites and social media sources recently have published inaccuracies and erroneous assumptions about Texas A&M University and its branch campus in Qatar. With the speed at which misinformation can travel today, it's important that you have access to accurate uh, information. So basically, uh, they opened a campus in 2003, and Qatar uh, has been investing in Texas a and I, I, I mean, giving, I guess. Uh, and they were concerned about uh, Qatar's access to Texas A&M's nuclear reactor and any nuclear secrets that are uh, researched hmm. at the A&M campus. Um, but wasn't that right around the time they needed the money to hire a new coach? But that would that'd be, what, November, October of this year? Well, it was before. Okay. So this this happened January seventh, twenty twenty four was when it came out. Okay. So, yeah, I did. I missed that one. I'm gonna have to look into it. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a campus in Qatar. Yeah. yeah. Does. Mm hmm. Since two thousand three. Interesting. I'm trying to find the tweet about it, and I can't find it. Because I'm sure, like, once Qatar found all the oil in their country, they're like, we need to bring in some people from Texas, just to, like teach us how to extract it teach or, us how to be oil guys yeah teach us how to just like own it <laughs> yeah and take advantage of it yeah yeah it, Qatar has they've got that natural gas field that's out in like the persian gulf yeah, yeah. they own it's it, i forget what percentage of the global amount of natural gas they own but they own this one part that they mm -hmm. just they're like this is ours this yep. is how we make money now oh hey literally the other day uh a&m is shutting down their qatari campus oh no okay. yeah what happened i don't know the uh, former president of the university says the Qatar decision needs more transparency and that the partnership was successful in every respect. Every respect, except for the fact that they had to shut it down. Right. Uh, yeah, I'd say that it probably needs a level of transparency that is not possible when you're dealing with the Qatari government. I'm going to find the thing that was, uh, y'all Y'all just go, but I'm going to find the other thing I was talking about. Okay. I think, is it University of Utah that also has a nuclear reactor? Kind of wild, kind of wild that college campuses have yeah. Have I did not know that power plants. Oh, and remember that one woman was like, someone threatened to to do something to nuclear reactor in Utah. I think they lost they a football win. game, and yeah. and this drunk yes. lady threatened to blow it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which respect? I respect that. There are currently thirty five operating university research reactors on thirty three sites in twenty four states. That's wild, including. Rhode Island Nuclear Science Center, Texas A&M, uh, UC Davis, um, Ohio State, hmm. uh, P Penn State, Purdue. There's a lot. What's the one it campus crazy that, you, that you really hope have... doesn't have a nuclear reactor? I, for um, me, it... University of Florida is on here. That's Oh, that's dangerous. Oh, no. That's very dangerous. Yeah, we're fucked. Um, Mizzou. Uh, Penn State would be up there on that list. Penn State is on this list. Yeah, Penn State would be, yeah. NC State. But how big are these? Because uh, a Boy Scout once made a nuclear reactor in his backyard. There are different types of reactors. Like, there are several different types of reactors that they have. Like, one has an AGN, a Triga, plate fuel critical facility. I'm surprised. Does Tennessee have one? No. That's That's shocking to me. It being in Knoxville... Like home of the uh, the Oak Ridge. Yeah, I guess I guess we have a facility close enough that UT doesn't need one. Yeah, you just have access to it, probably. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Yeah, the Tennessee would <clears throat> that would scare me too. If like what if if you guys had like a nuclear bomb, like almost all uh, the Big Ten schools do. Probably for the best. Yeah, because the Big Ten people won't they won't use it blow up the world if you know. If they there's go an, eight and four. Yeah, or if there's like an NIL investigation. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be shocked to see Tennessee deploying that nuclear device to uh, the head of the NCAA. Well, you know the NCAA is uh, no longer pursuing that after they got brought to their knees in federal court, right? I love that. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. You fought the law and you won. They fucked with the wrong ones. Um, so there's uh, there are people that truly believe that free energy is being suppressed, and some examples of free energy would be, I guess – 
solar. Although it's not like 100% free, you still have to install the panels. Um, you still have to make the panels. You have to make the panels. Which is very expensive. Um, water, hydroelectricity, and uh, I guess you can look at that in a couple different ways, using water to power windmills and things like that, or turbines, or uh, just being able to pour water into a gas tank and have that work. Um, so Mythbusters examined it, and uh, all the all the attempts failed. So a TV show looked into it, and they said, no, it can't be done. Uh, there's also something called a perpetual motion machine. Have you guys heard about those? Yeah. Hardest you know? part's hiding the motor. <laughs> That's good. You've never heard that? No, I haven't heard that. The hardest part of perpetual motion is hiding the motor. There are people that drive themselves insane, like that dedicate their entire lives trying to invent a perpetual motion machine. And they're, they're always so close, but they can never figure it out. I wonder why. I wonder why. Uh, but yeah, people, I feel like it's something that people don't really do anymore, but it was real big back in like the early 1900s, mid 1900s. Uh, so there's geothermal, geothermal energy production. Um, and on Mythbusters, they said, well, the government hasn't arrested anybody for researching solar cells, windmills, or geothermal. Uh, and they haven't closed down research centers that are investigating such topics. So the motives that free energy suppression conspiracy theorists ascribe to energy companies are flawed and misunderstand market logic. While some claim that it is perfectly possible to produce a machine that, that would provide the world with free energy, except governments and corporations deny funding for the necessary research, the conclusion flies in the face of observable developments. You can look at the progression of solar power to see that the energy business rather than trying to destroy any promising new technology, will instead seek to own it and profit from it, which I, I would agree with that. Like all the biggest investors in solar technology, um, windmills, things like that, they tend to be the big fossil fuel companies that are like, hey, the, the winds are blowing in this direction. I would rather us not go out of business. Instead, let's try to corner the market and make money off it. Yeah. So it's like if you have a shitload of money and you're in the energy business, you can then just bully your way into owning the next new wave of energy. Mm -hmm. It is kind of crazy. Yeah. With the cigarette companies, they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Oh, With uh, new alternatives like Lucy. And marijuana. Uh, yeah, like, like uh, the new dip stuff. Like Altria owns a ton of stock of some of those companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, if we ever crack the code on fusion energy, like obviously that has the potential to be like extremely cheap, limitless energy, but they'll still, the government will still control it and charge it just because of like all of the money we've spent on researching it over the past 20 years. Yeah. They own like all the, all the patents for anything that you would use to extract the free energy. Yeah. Um, because they have to make back the energy that like the, the amount of money that's been invested in fusion research, which like there's there's like I'll see a news article once a year where there's like huge breakthrough with fusion. But in the articles, it's still like, well, we're still like decades away from being able to make this feasible. Mm -hmm. But that would be wild because apparently the, I mean, realistically, like, yeah. we need a ton more nuclear reactors. To, if we dealing with the waste is going to suck at one point, but if we really want to go carbon neutral, sorry for the way for saying new nuclear, 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 nu new clear. Yeah. I mean, new clear France has France gets 70% of their power from nuclear, or at least they did at one point, but then for some reason their nuclear capacity has been going down and it's been horrible timing because that's right when the Russia-Ukraine war broke out. So uh -huh. everyone's like, oh, we can just rely on France and get some of their nuclear power. But then France is like, oh, our nuclear power stations aren't actually doing too well right now. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I mean, nuclear power, it's it's clean. at Like, it's clean. At its best. At its best. Uh -huh. And right. then, yeah, you eventually have to do something with the waste. What if you shot the waste into space? Oh. Ooh. I'm that into that. could just turn into a giant nuclear bomb if it doesn't get out. <laughs> Fire just falls back. Oh, yeah, you're right. If it just falls back to Earth. <laughs> Fire it into the sun. Like a SpaceX hey, let's, explosion. It's just literally like the biggest nuclear <laughs> payload of all time. And it's just going up towards 
the the outer rims of the galaxy well, just comes back and just blows up the entire planet. I don't know if it's unstable in the way that it would create an explosion, but it would definitely cause radiation. Like that's the problem, right? Is yeah. it's, yeah. it's toxic. So if you fired it into the sun, the sun's already emitting radiation and it's the biggest nuclear reactor of all time, or at least in our solar system. So you just send it into the sun, let it burn up. You can't throw it in a volcano. You can't. That would have no. been a good idea. But you can't do that. Uh, no. There's uh, why can't you? I don't know. You look at ask the people of Iceland. Yeah. I want you to look into that, Billy. Billy might have just cracked the code. Yeah, ask the people of Iceland if the U.S. can start putting their nuclear waste in their volcanoes. Oh, Billy, I do have a campaign question for you. So Donald Trump, he did like a, a, a trial balloon where he threw out an idea of purchasing Greenland. Buying Greenland, getting that for the United States. And people laughed at the time. I don't think it's that stupid. We've done no. – our, our country has expanded several times. Uh, and like – yeah. Uh, I, Iceland owns Greenland, right? No, no, no. Uh, no, no. Denmark does. Oh, Denmark does. Iceland's its own country. Iceland Denmark doesn't owns really Greenland. like Americans. Oh. Um, well, ask them what they of... think about buying Greenland. Yeah, I think it's a great investment. Americans That's where the seed ball the is, right? Yeah, the seed ball could be there. And just the way that global warming is going, like this past winter in Chicago was great. Like it yeah. was not that cold. I think Chicago might be a solid place to be for global warming. You're not near the coast and we don't mind having warmer winters. Mm -hmm. But that means like Greenland, 40 years down the line, like that could be a, a very nice place to live. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look into Greenland. And Greenland has also benefited a lot from uh, from Big Map from the big oh, cartography yes, yes. industry because everyone thinks that Greenland is like twice the size of the United States because of, yeah. of how it's projected on a map when you unroll it. Yep. Uh, n apparently not that big. No. Yeah. It looks larger than Australia on a, like a lot of maps. Yeah. But uh, whatever. I, it still looks cool. I would still like to own Greenland one day. Gr yeah. Uh, so there have been some theories that energy suppression has been going on since the 19th century. In the 1930s, Thomas Henry Morey, an electrical engineer based in Utah, claimed that he and his family had been threatened and shot at on several occasions and that his lab was ransacked to stop his claimed free energy research and public demonstrations. No evidence has been provided for any of these claims. Morey has several times produced devices that he said were powered by a mysterious stone that he found while doing missionary work in Sweden in the 1910s. So I don't know if this guy is a scientist or if he's just like an explorer finding it's, like a, he, so he found like a, a, a power stone. That's how things happen in Mormonism. Sweet. Yeah. You find rocks and the rocks have powers. Like that's how, that's uh, sick. was it Joseph Smith? Yeah. Found, found those rocks and then he used his hat to translate them. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, they were tablets. They were tablets. Yeah. Those tablets provided the basis for Mormonism. So yeah, this guy found a, found a cool rock that provided, secret energy it might have just been crack cocaine mm -hmm. actually we should study mincy for how to get free energy the guy doesn't stop just redirect mincy's energy into something positive uh another notable name connected to allegations of harassment or suppression of free energy technology is nikola tesla free i got some f fire conspiracy about this okay so free energy proponents hold that tesla's wardencliffe tower could generate unlimited energy for free However, the tower was only intended to transmit energy for free. Energy would still be still need to be generated through conventional means. Billy, what have you learned about this? So this this theory involves Donald Trump, Baron Trump, time travel, okay. all sorts of things. Okay. Just you lost it's me. It's crazy. Time travel. All right. Well, look up the adventures of Baron Trump. Just if you want to, if you want to see, it sounds crazy, but look up the adventures of Baron Trump. Can you explain it to us? I'll explain. So Nikola Tesla had all of these writings, inventions and stuff, including what may have been a, a free energy device of some sort, his tower in his apartment that he sort of went crazy in before he died. Guess who his landlord was? Fred Trump. John G. Trump. His grandfather? So his uncle. Okay. So 
what happened with uh so basically the fbi asked him to seize uh all of the stuff that was in tesla's apartment and uh trump was also uh he knew how to work on x-ray machines this is the uncle during world war ii um and had a little technical knowledge so he then was called in to analyze uh the tesla artifacts okay actually you know what he was not the landlord he actually was working for the federal bureau of investigations yeah so he oh yeah he wasn't the landlord i'm sorry i got that wrong uh he went to analyze tesla's artifacts that were being held in government custody after a three-day investigation trump's report included there was nothing of which could constitute a hazard in unfriendly hands in tesla's uh of his belongings so fast forward donald trump who you know some would say biff from back to the future was based off of um another movie about time travel um becomes famous rich and everything uh everything seems to go his way strangely up until recently um but you know everyone's like oh wow how does this guy just keep winning enter the adventures of baron trump a story about a time traveling german boy named baron trump that was written in the year and i'm gonna get the exact year we've discussed this right 1889 1889 and in 1890 about a boy who goes by baron trump as he discovers a weird underground uh place where he goes uh he discovers a weird underground civilization, offends the natives, flees from entanglements with local women, and repeats the pattern until arriving back home at Castle Trump. Um, and there's also time travel in it. Um, so, yeah. So, Trump's youngest son, Baron Trump, may be a time traveler. Well, I, it's weird. What does that have to do with Tesla? Because they think that the Trump family found some of, of Tesla's works that may have been free energy to create a time machine because time travel is possible if you have unlimited energy, apparently, theoretically. Okay. So they're saying that the Trump family may have discovered time travel and that's why Biff in Back to the Future is based off of Donald Trump because Donald Trump can time travel. I, what, and it has been just like... What, what period of time would be the funniest to send Donald Trump back to? I don't like to imagine Donald Trump being like a medieval king. I don't think that would be too off base. I think the future would be funnier. What about like the Renaissance? Have I we, could I could see him thriving in the Renaissance. Unfortunately, he kind of like he plays in times where there was probably more Trumps. Yeah. Yeah. The whole like, yeah. Send back to like the Soviet Union during the Bolshevik Revolution. I, I he would probably be on the side of the royalists, or he 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 would be on the Tsar's side. Well, no, he might be on he might be on the people's side, and then he rises to power, and then he becomes Stalin. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, I could see him being a Stalin-esque character. Yeah, like he, yeah, it would just be fun to like put him back in different periods of time. Send him to like like samurai era Japan. Yeah, um, <laughs> that would be that would be hilarious. Send him to Scotland when they were uh, when when Braveheart was being taped. The king's gay. Uh, all right. So since free energy theorists are impossible under modern science, those arguing that free energy technologies have been suppressed assert that the scientific community has controlled and buried research into alternative avenues of energy production via the institutions of peer review. So they're saying that um, the scientists who are working on it uh, are being suppressed by their peers who uh, take their studies and shit all over them. Um, which is very hard. I think that'd be hard to do to like get scientists to agree to like form a conspiracy against. I guess a lot of people do believe that that's happening. Um, other claim means of suppression include buying the patent of free energy device from the inventor, suing the inventor and even murdering the inventors of free energy devices or associated efficiency technologies. So perpetual motion machines, 
The history of pet perpetual motion machines dates back to the Middle Ages. The history since is full of scams. I think Da Vinci tried to work on a perpetual motion machine, too. That mm. sounds about right. That was one of his things that he was up to. By the way, did Da Vinci actually invent a helicopter? Is that true? He put together like uh, a helicopter based off of those twirly toys yeah. that go up in the air. Um, and he just invented a bigger one uh, that was theoretical. He never built it. One of the conspiracies that I actually believe in is that other situation or other civilizations figured out how to fly things. Like, are you telling me that we didn't just figure out flight until a hundred years ago? I mean, flight's tough, but you can watch a bird and then you can be like, Oh, this is how a bird goes. Through. There were a lot of really smart people that lived before yeah. us. They didn't have access Hand to like gliding. jet engines or, or the combustion engine, obviously, which is a problem. But yeah, hang gliding, gliders in general. We've talked about some of the civilizations in South America that have these toys that look like airplanes. I just, I, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that we just discovered flight. Hang, yeah, hang it's gliders. Crazy I can see no people using tribe that has like done gl hang gliding. Yeah, hang gliding. That's something I'll never do. I guess we're too smart to jump off a cliff, even yeah. if. With a makeshift Yeah, wing. so with perpetual motion machines, the problem is the existence of such a machine goes against the first two laws of thermodynamics. The first law states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, merely transferred. The second is that the entropy of an isolated system does not decrease. The laws of thermodynamics could be wrong, and it could be that they have simply not yet been disproven. But people have been trying to disprove those laws and create a perpetual motion machine ever since they were first written about over 150 years ago. Lisa Simpson did make one, though. Um, the Tesla free energy generator. The energy myth that surrounds Tesla sprang from a claim that he once made that he had invented both a free energy machine and a method of transmitting that energy wirelessly. He started working on a generator that, in his words, would not consume any fuel in the, in the 1890s. In 1901, he was grant, granted a U.S. patent for an apparatus for the utilization of radiant energy. By 1931, he was ready to claim that he had invented a machine to harness the power of cosmic rays. So there are such things as like, you know, solar winds. If you could yeah. somehow figure out how to harness those, it'd be free energy. It would be unlimited until the sun just quit on itself. until it expanded so much that it died or imploded upon itself. Um, so there have been harnessing of the power of cosmic rays from the sun for years, solar power. Rather than using the sun's direct rays in their heat, Tesla's idea was to link the positive changes in the atmosphere with the negative charges in the ground and produce an electric current. It may be theoretically possible, but most estimates suggest that the amount of energy generated would in practice be too small to be of any use. So that sounds like one of those things that like it could work. We just don't have the technology yet. Yeah. yeah. Same with like, creating energy from dividing water into oxygen and hydrogen yeah like it's the marginal creation isn't worth this like the juice isn't worth the squeeze as they say not yet but what if it did i mean honestly yeah not yet what it, there's this crazy theory graham hancock style and honestly i know donnie's a fan but what if they do have a process that tesla discovered uh that they're hiding from us that allowed the pyramids to be built in you know and do things in past societies that just we've lost to time like what if there was a more advanced time period than we are even now that built you know amazing structures amazing technologies it may still be here um flying around us just checking in uh from their home underneath the antarctic ice graham hancock's theory was that like the ancient egyptians used sonic energy where like if, if everyone could like sing at the exact same vibration it could like move huge rocks or if you could like create a sound that like vibrates at the same frequency as the blocks you could then manipulate them i guess that that's probably true because you can sing at a pitch that breaks glass yeah and it is true that like every object like in this room has a certain vibration that like all of the molecules are moving at. And like if you can match it, I don't know. That was what he talked about in one of his books. Yeah. 
And I think there's like a humming. one of the drawings on the pyramid or nearby, like shows people singing at like everyone's singing at a block. I think hmm. he found that somewhere. I don't know. Um, yeah, the the free energy might also just be slavery. So the Egyptians, that's one of the theories, right? Is that they use slaves to build the pyramids? Probably the most accepted one. Free energy yeah. is just exploiting the workforce. Yes, that's what it is. Well, I, I like mean, what in, if. Um, I was just saying, like, what if you took the sidewalks of Manhattan and you created something underneath them that can, like, use everybody's footsteps to generate electricity? Because there's, like, a, a lot of force being put on those sidewalks. Yeah. So if you took that and then, like, repurposed the energy there to then power the buildings. It's like a bike could power a light bulb if you yes. if you hooked it up to the light bulb. Yeah. It or, spins like, a turbine, which then creates battery electricity. Battery tech. Pel that's, Peloton that's... should partner with like a major energy company. Yeah. And then just every Peloton bike in the country is generating power. So every time you get on the Peloton, you can lower your own electricity bill. Oh, I like that. And then so it motivates you to work out more too because you're also saving money. I like that a lot. It's a gym membership that pays for itself. Yeah. Gyms, they just open up a gym. Yes. And that's a power plant now. Yeah. And the more like, you I work out, have... the lower you have to pay for your monthly rate. Yeah, because I'm sure a gym could – I think one – like, could one gym power one house at least? I don't know. I don't know how that converts, but yeah. I'm sure the technology is improving on it too, so it would get yeah more and more efficient. Like an Icelandic gym, Billy. That could, could power all of Iceland. Power the whole island. I'm pretty sure there is like a children's playground that either pumps water from a well or it is that exact concept of producing energy. Are you talking about the uh, the free energy water pumps that you've seen on TikTok? No, I don't know what those are, but is it uh, – oh, oh, it's on the sheet. Yeah. Huh. So um, – No, I'm, it's not that one. It's like kids, and I think it's to pump water. So um, they show – This might be it. Wait. Yeah, they show somebody sticking some pipes into water, and then they shake them back and forth until all of a sudden they start spouting endless quantities of liquid. It looks magical. There's no apparent power source, but the water keeps flowing, sometimes from an outdoor body of water, sometimes from a container that the person keeps refilling. It looks like these devices run on free energy or energy with no apparent origin. There are two methods to move water that don't require an external power source. One, I can tell you right off the bat, is like siphoning. That's how you siphon gas. If you like put a tube into a gas tank and then you suck the tube until you get some liquid, you're, the power of the uh, liquid being transferred, the weight of it, makes it look like there's a pump that's putting it from one device into another. Do people still siphon gas? Yeah. They do? I've yep. seen, Yeah, I feel like, I, I don't know, I, I think I've seen someone do it in the last few years. Like you, you, People used to just steal gas from other cars. Yeah. Have you ever tried to do it? I've never done it, no. Yeah, you, I, the hard part is just not getting the gas in your mouth. So you got to give it like a suck and then immediately take yeah. it out. Yeah. You have to just get like One a time, tiny amount of gas. Yeah. Hypothetically, let's say someone was driving a diesel car, uh, but accidentally put gasoline in it recently and had to siphon out the de uh, the gasoline in order to put diesel back in. Uh huh. Uh, you know, people still siphon gas all the time. <laughs> yeah. Some, some of these people. Did this uh, happen to you, you know, recently, Billy? <laughs> Look on my website. You Consult my website. <laughs> go, to my, go to my website. Yes, please go to my website. Uh, but that I know everyone's going to be was, asking me about the time they saw me on the side of the road <laughs> siphoning gas. I was not stealing someone's gas. I was, taking... I was siphoning my own gas. It was at a gas station, and I realized just in time. So, so there's a rental. There's the siphon pump, and then wait, did you do this in Iceland? Um. Did you just do this like yesterday? Website. Check the website. <laughs> That's yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just mentioned how I'm beat, beat yeah. off about the no, no diesel. <laughs> so, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, because of uh, because of our government, your gov our government made you siphon gas yesterday, Bill. <laughs> because we just don't deal with diesel that much. Yeah. Uh, they do have uh, like, very noticeable signs on at gas stations telling you which one. I actually, them. it actually didn't happen in Iceland. It actually happened in Brazil, but and I wasn't filling up the pump. Wait, you were in Brazil? Not recently. Are you in the CIA? <laughs> What's happening? Uh, 
Check he out could his be. website. Deep State Ask Donnie. Donnie. <laughs> I, I don't want to get wrapped up in this. Uh, there's Ask also Donnie. He's seen my activity in the field. <laughs> <laughs> there's also the ram pump, which is short for a hydraulic ram pump. So the ram pump is a way to move water to a higher location without an existing energy source. Both the siphon and the ram pumps move water without any external energy, but you don't get more energy than you started with. So you might get water where you want it, and that's the point of a pump, but even if you had an impossibly efficient power generator that was powered by the falling water from the ram pump, it still wouldn't give you free energy since some of the water has to be ejected, <coughs> excuse me, ejected at the lower end. The water source would, <coughs> would eventually dry up that would mean that you would have to use energy to lift more water to add to your source. So you do have like, it's a finite loop of, it's like a closed loop of what essentially would be free energy, but you don't get energy out of it since you'd have to put the water back to get the like a uh, uh, nonstop source of free energy. Oh, that reminds me. Um, have you guys seen Die Hard? Yeah. Die Hard with a Vengeance. Die Hard 3. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. There's a puzzle oh, in yeah. it. There's a puzzle here in order to like follow some step to defuse a bomb. Uh, he has to solve a riddle. So follow me on this one. Okay. You have two jugs of water. One jug of water has three gallons in it, or excuse me. One jug of water is a three gallon jug. It's empty. The other gal, the other jug is a five gallon jug. You have a pump of water. How can you make one of those jugs contain exactly four gallons of water? If you can make it have four gallons of water in it, then you diffuse the bomb. But if it's plus or minus by like point by 10%, let's say, uh, then the bomb blows up and kids die. How do you do that? I remember doing this at some point and I don't remember. Cause in the movie, they skip one of the steps. So if you're just watching it, you're very confused. You're like, what happened? So what you, you fill with again, you have, you have one jug that is a three gallon jug and it's and empty and one jug. That's a five gallon jug. Okay. You take, you fill the five gallon jug, uh -huh. pour it into the three. Yep. So now you have t three and two you empty the three. So now there's two gallons in the five gallon jug. Mm -hmm. You pour that into the three, fill the five up again dump it into the three to fill the three and that so that one gallon goes and now you have four in the five gallon jug there you go i think you did that right i mean um yeah. but you need yep. the, got to you four need gallon in the jug what do you, do you need the gallon in one of the jugs no you you just need exactly four gallons okay so then yeah. why don't you just do the first step twice to the three gallon where you go uh three to where you get two gallons and do that twice. Well, how, how do you, how can you get two gallons if you only know that there's a three gallon jug and there's a five gallon jug? So what big T said is you fill the five gallon all the way to the top. You pour that into the uh -huh. three. That means that you have two gallons left in the five gallon jug. You, right. so you just do that twice. You empty out the three gallon. I don't, jug. I don't think you're, under, you only, that's you only not have possible, two jugs. Billy. Oh, okay, okay. So there's not a third reception. No, no, no. no. So, okay, so, okay. so you pour the five gallon jug into the three gallon jug. That means that you have two gallons left in the five gallon jug. You empty out the three gallon jug. Mm -hmm. Then you pour the two gallons from the five gallon jug into the three gallon jug. Yes. Yep. And fill the five up again. Fill the five up again. And then pour that into the three till it's full. Till it's full. Now you have four. Now you have left. four gallons left in the five gallon jug. Yep. Yep. Congrats, cool. Big T. That was fast. You saved the I kids. Know. That was good. Yeah. Nice work. I've heard it before. It was good. That was still still impressive. Uh, there's Gary McKinnon. Is that where that originated? I, it was probably a riddle before that. Had yeah. Uh, but they used it in that movie. So, Gary McKinnon. We should do a riddle segment. Okay. Bill, we just your, get riddle. That's your assignment we're for for next Tuesday's show. We're just going to get riddles. Give, it's just a show on riddles. Give just tons of riddles. Everyone me, bring a riddle. Give me five riddles, Billy. Okay, we can do more than that. Okay, but you have to bring five riddles. Okay. All right. Uh, Did you see Josh Peck go uh, crazy? No. Yeah, apparently Josh Peck, he like shaved his head and he's saying that he, he got abused by uh, Nickelodeon. No, uh, no. No, Drake Bell. Yeah. 
The other one. Oh. Dr- Drake of Drake and Josh. Josh. And Drake oh, said he did? Yeah, they're saying yeah. it was yeah, that there's large, a whole documentary. By, by Oh, he said it was It was Brian Peck is the man who abused Drake Bell. Yeah. Not oh, related to jo- Josh Peck. Not related to Josh Peck. Two Pecks. Oh, okay. Two separate Pecks. Like Sydney Sweeney. Yep. <laughs> Very true. Bonk. And then Dan Schneider is the one who is the creator of all of those shows. But Drake and Bell. And he's the one with the foot fetish, right? Allegedly, yes. But Drake Damn. Bell was abused by Brian Peck. Josh Peck is not involved in this. Who's Very the, sad story. Who's the fat guy that they're all accusing of, like, well, Dan, Dan Schneider is the fat guy that started, like, iCarly, oh, okay, Josh, and yeah. Pe- or Drake and Josh and all of those. But Brian Peck is the one who Drake Bell okay. got abused by, like, directly. Is that like a Lou Pearlman situation? I don't know who Lou Pearlman is. I think is. so. He's a guy that started in sync in the Backstreet Boys in O-Town. Yeah. He's a big fat guy. That was like an abusive manager. Yeah, yeah, basically. I think so. But Brian Brian Peck was a dialect coach for those shows and sexually abused Drake Bell. All I know is I saw a clip of Dan Schneider and he's in a hot tub with like some of those kids. He, yeah. And he's fully clothed. Yeah. He's wearing like a button up shirt or like <laughs> it's I mean, obviously, I know fat guys will wear like a T-shirt into the pool, but he's wearing like. A suit business like, casual yeah <laughs> yeah a in suit the in the tub. pool he's Here, wearing like on. business casual just hanging out in the hot tub that's wild that's probably the only way they'd let him get in there with the kids <laughs> here i'll send you guys the picture of it it's no, really it's so it, funny it's very and he dove right in <laughs> but that's like like amanda Bynes was heavily involved in it um where did this come from by the way this is a no 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 this whole conversation yeah, uh, I don't know. That was Billy. Billy just brought it Billy up. Billy brought it up with Josh Peck. Yeah. I just saw it was trending. I was like, wait, this this seems juicy. I've been on Iceland time, so I can't what time do a lot of outdoor there? stuff. <laughs> it's 7.30 p.m. What time does the sun set now? Does it? Probably yeah. soon. Yeah, no, it's only it's only in the summer, like oh, okay, July and August. I'll tell you, I've been getting we're getting some sunsets at like seven fifteen nice. now. Oh, it's been it's some good the shit. Best. It's really nice. I like forget that it's late. Like yeah. I get yeah. home from work and I'm like, it could be, it could be like seven thirty and it's still light out. And I'm like, what time? Yeah, like it's I, been the good. day isn't even close to done. Not even close. Not even close. It's beautiful. It's so great. I just bought some chairs for my deck this summer. Nice. Oh, that's big. Oh, it's it's um. I'm excited. Are it's still a, cold, though. Are you a grill master, Big True. T? Not really. Hmm. I I hope to become one in the next 15 to 20 years, but not as of now. You've got a full plate for the next 15 to 20 years. You've I've got some goals. got a lot of stuff I need to do. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go to Little League baseball games, pull up a chair? You that you make that sound. No, no I'm not... That, you took that in a bad way. No, you said it in a bad way. I want to have my own children who are good at sports, mm-hmm. and uh, I'd I'd like to like you know have a kid that's like really good at high school football and just be like the ultimate high school football dad. Yeah. If your kid is bad at sports, are you still gonna love him? Of course. Less, but. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How good do, do they have to be to get Big T's full love? Like a starter in high school. Okay. No, 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 not again, not to get be, be loved just fully. Yeah, fully loved. That's what I'm saying. So if they're like a, a, bench, a, ro- a rotation player in high school, bench warmer player, what how much less love will they receive? Not a lot. What's the difference? How then? how far would you go to help them be a starter? As much as they wanted. So if they were like, hey, dad, I want to juice. Would you let them juice? Of course not. That's a dumb question. <laughs> but what if they're like, Dad, you need to sign me up for this sports camp and it costs like $8,000. Then I got to do like, you got to hire me, this private coach. That's another I mean, 4, if they 000. were good, then I would want to help them get really good. Okay. Now, if it's apparent they suck, then you probably don't dump a ton of money into it. But if it's like, okay, so if the, the kid is really good at sports, then like, more ice cream for the kid, it sounds like. Maybe ice cream with all the toppings on it. Yeah, maybe. And if they're, 
you know, a bench warmer, and you're like, let's just have dessert once a week, special <laughs> occasions only. I don't, I don't think that drastic. Just you know. Yeah, let's get you your favorite you, food if they're if they score a touchdown. Yeah, sure. Let's say outstanding in high school, little undersized for college ball. And he's like, Dad, can you help me get the juice? Can we can you Billy, get on no, TRT I'm not gonna give, give to my kid steroids. Sounds I'm just, like I'm don't just love wondering where your line is. They only get steroids if they're good. <laughs> You shouldn't do steroids, kids. Don't listen to Billy. <laughs> no. Uh, let, let's talk about the rest of the uh, the yeah. free energy yeah. stuff. That was a quick tangent. Um, there was a guy named Gary McKinnon who was known online as Solo. And in late 2001 and early 2002, he carried out what would be described by a U.S. prosecutor as the biggest military computer hack of all time. He breached 97 military and NASA computers to unlock classified secrets. This guy sounds like a hero. McKinnon was arrested and he was facing 70 years in prison, 2 million bucks in fines, said that his reason for launching the hack was his obsessive search for evidence of UFOs and free energy suppression by the U.S. government. He didn't find much about free energy, but his findings relating to UFOs tantalized him as his fingers danced across the keyboard, scrolling through images and documents deep in the labyrinths of classified military data. McKinnon discovered a classified personnel roster. He traced the words non-terrestrial officers. The Excel spreadsheet contained the names and ranks of Air Force personnel not registered anywhere else. It also included information about ship-to-ship transfers, which Solo had never seen elsewhere. None of these were ocean-going ships. It was astounding. They are not a Navy, they are not an Army, and not even an Air Force, so I was thinking they must be an off-planet Space Force, or a Space Fleet, at least, he said. In an interview with Wired, McKinnon explained what drove him to do the hack. I knew that government suppressed anti-gravity UFO-related technologies or what they call zero-point energy. This should not be kept hidden when pensioners can't pay their fuel bills. In 2012, following a 10-year battle over McKinnon being extradited to the United States for prosecution, Theresa May blocked his extradition, citing his Asperger syndrome and depression, stating that there is such a high risk of him ending his own life that a decision to extradite would be incompatible with his human rights. So he brings up a good point. Anti-gravity that I think there's a lot of conspiracy theories around like that the U S has found alien ships that, mm -hmm. and that's what like those ships use as fuel. That's Bob how, Lazar, right? Yeah. Bob Lazar. That's how they travel. And like, they've been just working to reverse engineer those ships for the last 30 years and like may have made some huge breakthroughs, but like they can't just give it to the public. Cause then they would also have to come out with the fact that like they, figured it out using a ufo that we didn't tell you about yeah yeah and then it would just open up pandora's box but i mean anti-gravity would be limitless energy because it's just like right now we can only don't we we i don't know how to explain it but yeah gravity only pulls in one direction but if you could like create an anti-gravity field that would just so, so then like a wheel would just have to keep on moving that could then power something pull in the opposite direction yeah yeah, you could you could pull it up and then let it drop down and uh power a turbine. Yeah, you turn it off with and water. On. Yeah. Yeah. Um Bill, you'll like this. The diesel inventor. The death of Rudolf Diesel has been said to be an event that has fueled further conspiracies about suppression of energy technology. That's awesome. I didn't know that diesel fuel was named after one guy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. He was diesel, dude. He was diesel. Vin, yeah, Vin and that diesel. was just mean strong. <laughs> On September 29th, 1913, Rudolf Diesel, the inventor of the engine that bears his name, disappears from the steamship Dresden while traveling from Antwerp to England. On October 10th, a Belgian sailor aboard a North Sea steamer spotted a body floating in the water. Upon further investigation, it was Diesel's. There was and remains a great deal of mystery surrounding his death. It was officially judged a suicide, but many people believe that Diesel was murdered. At the time of his death, he was on the way to attend the groundbreaking of a new diesel engine plant and to meet with the British Navy about installing his engine on their subs. Conspiracy theories begin to fly almost immediately. Inventor thrown into the sea to stop sale of patents to British government. Read one headline. Another worry that diesel was mur murdered by agents from big oil trusts. It is likely that diesel did throw himself overboard. As it turns out, he was nearly broke, but the mystery probably never will be solved. So what, what did he know? He someone bought his engine, like a funny company bought the diesel engine originally. The patent. Um, I'm looking into it right now. It was like some. It was like a. 
I almost want to say uh, like a a food company bought the diesel engine patents in America. It was wasn't it Budweiser? I don't know. Wait, Bud Diesel. It is interesting to think though, if you just like look at it for what it is, that uh, all this energy that we have now is just us burning dinosaur bones. Like just their bodies. We just get energy from a yeah. bunch of old bodies. Do you think Well, it, they're not dinosaur bodies. It's it's mostly plant vegetation. But do you think yeah. in like, I don't know, four hundred million years, people that like happen to build their houses on top of what used to be a cemetery are gonna be burning like our bones for for fuel more more than likely it will be large deposits of carbon from uh like a forest and maybe we'll be combined in it the yeah but we're mostly water so like the amazon ran like rainforest in like yeah 400 million years of someone's living on top yeah. of it and he didn't realize it used to be a rainforest yeah he digs deep enough that would have all turned into oil so buy buy land in Brazil, and then just wait. Yeah, I wonder Although, if any if any people that own cemeteries though are like, I'm in this for the long play. Yeah, well, I mean, if just we're still, I don't think down. we're going to be using fossil fuels in 400 million years. Probably not. If we're even still around, probably not. Uh, there was that movie. Chain. Wait, what's yeah? What if you like? That'd be a great way to do intergenerational wealth if you just started buying something that like will take 150 years to actually come to fruition. And you just bought a shit ton now and then like spent all your money so that you don't give any inheritance. It's just that. Yeah. Come to what? It's like, it's okay. I mean, like you, you plant like redwood trees for lumber. And then you say, here, son, here's like, this will probably be worth a ton of money in a hundred years when these redwoods get gigantic and you can sell them for lumber. Yeah. But your son won't be alive in a hundred years either. So it would be like, you can pass this on to you. yeah, you could you could you yeah you tell your son you can pass this on to his son, but then he's not yeah. going to be pumped about that. Yeah, he's, he's like, like so you I asshole. Nothing. I have to manage this he's forest like, now. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be tough to find a wife when I have absolutely nothing. Yeah, just that, know that your grandchildren, but a your grandchildren will be rich. Yeah, once this comes to fruition. Um, but something mm. like that would work. I don't know. You could buy a house that's like fifty feet away from the ocean and be like son one day this is going to be waterfront property yeah hmm. um by the way glaciers in iceland receding pretty fast oh yeah have you so, have you noticed the change since you've been in iceland for a week <laughs> no but i saw where it was the year before uh it's pretty fast kind of gives a lot of perspective to people out there fact finding I, I was doing my own research it's uh it's pretty bad so global but in 1300 uh -huh. there was an ice age that made them go really far and they haven't gone past back to what it was before 1300 so okay but they're melting fast is that concerning to you it's like okay we're there we're we we might need to start making some changes so global warming is real climate change is real Bill Cotter for Congress. I have zero faith in humans <laughs> Just go to my website. making enough changes. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, but are you guys changes... a proponent of like, Bill Gates was saying, he's like, if we shoot these like micro, I think, was it gold or some sort of gold? If we shoot this into the atmosphere, it will reflect the sun and eventually cool the earth. And some and like, and he actually wants to do this, but everyone else is like, we're not going to trust some tech billionaire just shooting a bunch of shit into the yeah. atmosphere because what if it backfires like what if one person is wrong and then everyone's fucked yeah this is because it could also just send us deep into like an ice age this is the plot of the simpsons mr I, burns is upset that people aren't using as much energy as they used to so he built a giant thing that blocked out the sun oh yeah and then somebody shot him turns out it was maggie oh maggie's always been sort of an sjw <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. What? I mean, the thing is, I'm still trying to figure out what caused the ice age in 1300 in Iceland that caused it to freeze and kind. Of, Iceland was like way more uh, Maine-like than Iceland before, um, and it, it then became that because of the ice age. So, like, could that happen again? 
they probably had a bunch of planes and shit that they were flying around all the time. It was just an island filled with Taylor Swifts with their own jets. And they probably started the, thing the is, ice this age volcano? there. And then we have no proof that they had planes anymore because it all got wiped out in the ice age. This volcano is put out a ton of CO2, like more than a very large amount. I don't know the exact figure, but like like more than America does in a year, you, in a day. Billy, you should, you should take just a, a big ass steak out there and just cook your steak over the volcano. That would be sick. I tried, dude. I tried to get as close as I could. I almost got arrested. Like, literally, the Icelandic police are all about, like, they're not here to police you. They're here to help you. But then, like, one time you get close to the volcano, and they're like, arrest the American. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to – I thought you were supposed to be helping me. Why won't you let me get into this volcano? Yeah. <laughs> My taxes pay yeah. for this. So, Billy, actually, <laughs> some people think the Little Ice Age in the 1300 could have been caused by volcanic activity. Yeah. Because there were like a, so, a lot of volcanoes during that time that were popping off. But what's crazy is that those volcanoes were causing global warming and that caused the ice age. Yeah, because they can also, because, if it just straight up blocks out the sun. Like, I guess. If we get hit by another ice age, that'd be. That's good. Not good? Not good. Because think about it the glaciers would cover new york city like we're worried about the water rising and and enveloping like coastal cities what if the glaciers come back and literally just run over cities and towns that would have to be like a full-fledged ice age if it was just a little ice age i don't think the glaciers would come back to new york city but they would grow a little growth wouldn't be too bad that growth and retraction will grind down all the rock and yeah. uh, make the stone smaller and the men weaker who are working the fields. Yes. Um, the movie Chain Reaction, 1996, we talked about earlier, Keanu Reeves. It was based on the premise that free energy suppression is real. The movie revolves around a team from the University of Chicago discovering a renewable energy source by converting hydrogen to water to clean energy. In the film's plot, a scientific process extracts the hydrogen from the water, then burns the hydrogen to generate power and leaves only water as a residue, essentially a chemical perpetual motion. I think at one point he just like has the uh, the glass of water and he just drinks it to show like this is the only um, like runoff. Like, yeah, this is the only, that's like, the only byproduct. The only byproduct of it, yeah. The movie never clarifies how the, uh, how the hydrogen is extracted from the water, nor how water is still left over. The character Dr. Shannon makes contradictory statements. One time he says this is accomplished with a laser with millions of degrees. Another, another time he says frequency of sound and sono, sonoluminescence, sonoluminescence. In one scene, the movie shows a bubbling container reminiscent of cold fusion electrolytic cells. In another reference, sustained fusion. One character claims that a glass of water could power Chicago for weeks, but no clear explanation is ever given as to whether this is simply burning hydrogen released by highly efficient means or through nuclear processes. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting move to like make a movie about um, discovering free energy and then just never address that. That's a problem with the premise of the movie. It's like, how do you, yeah. how do you explain it? They should just have been like, we're not going to tell you. Yeah. I mean, it, that's a tough thing to explain. Christopher Nolan, he actually tried to explain what he was doing in um, interstellar. Yeah. Like he had a physicist that was on set. And so he was like, can you make sure that at least we're like trying to explain this right? Mm -hmm. um, his notes for Interstellar are crazy too. If you see his like timeline oh, that yeah. he wrote out like a plot, like it's basically traced your way through the plot. Um, which by the way, I haven't seen Interstellar. That's that's a big miss. You haven't seen Interstellar? Oh, no, no. I did see. No, I was thinking about. Tenant? Um, no, I heard that's very confusing too. I yeah, saw that's, Interstellar. That's too confusing. It's not good. It was so confusing that nobody liked it. Yeah. It was just like, I don't, this doesn't make sense. Uh, it was, what, what was the one with DiCaprio? Uh, Inception. Oh, Inception. Inception. I haven't seen Inception. That's very confusing, but it's confusingly enjoyable. Okay. I need to watch that one then. Mm. It's no desire to see Tenet. No, that was. I watched it on, I rewatched it again recently and I, it changed my whole theory i had when i first watched it when i was like 11 and i think he's in a dream at the end okay okay he was the entire what, what did no you guys spoilers. think at the end no spoilers 
It's ten years old. Yeah. Um, I I like the fact that they leave it open ended. I'm not sure though. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's one right answer. True. All right. Well, uh, I think that does it for this week's episode. Thank so what do we like? Are y'all? Do you think the government is suppressing this stuff? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna read Billy's I, website before I, I answer that. I think the premise uh, makes sense because the government's suppressing a lot of shit. I just didn't see a lot of evidence of what they're suppressing. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the technology is there. It seems like the only people that have claimed to figure this out are like kind of kooks that do in their backyard. Yeah, I think if they like, if we did have a new form of energy, they would just release it. And then find a way to profit off of it, but they wouldn't just yeah. keep it hidden. Yes, if there was, I think there are, I think they are hiding technology that may have to do with energy just for military secrets. Like there's definitely some way more efficient uh, type of maybe battery technology um, that causes energy to be cheaper, but they don't want to release it on a mass scale because it would give other countries edges that we don't have. Mm that we don't want to share. Yeah. Uh, I think especially with battery technology. Um, I, I, there's some stuff going on with lithium batteries. Like, you know how they all explode? Yeah. So there's new technologies that makes them way more efficient and safer. Uh, so it, like you could have a drone, a spy drone that just flies forever, perpetually just from like a battery that, well, not forever, but just like a supercharged battery. Um, and then it's just you can send it behind enemy lines, transporting back tons of info. And because it lasts so long, uh, they can collect more information and just leave it and explode itself. So, I mean, I, there's, de- they're definitely hiding technology, mm-hmm. but not perpetual energy technology. Yeah. But probably when pretty close. Energy. Yeah. There's definitely stuff that we don't know about that they're researching for like future weapons, future airplanes, future subs. I think, they're definitely like uh um what's a propulsion they definitely have propulsion systems we don't know about they definitely need to be looking into it if they're not looking into it i would be upset it's like you guys gotta be studying this stuff i think they Um, are they're at least trying to figure out fusion and if you say that you figured it out then you make russia be like oh shit the u.s figured this out we got to spend a lot of money on this and even if you don't have anything they're gonna waste a lot of time and money trying to catch up to what they think you have yeah psychological warfare all right we will see you guys uh next week billy's gonna have riddles for us five riddles and his website will be up so consult billy's Mm -hmm. website will cotter for congress yeah yeah yeah. that's the one go to will cotter for congress.com yep will cotter bill 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 Bill. did you actually almost get arrested i'm i'm calling bullshit on that i think you probably had one cop to say Sir, could you turn around? And you're like, oh my god, I almost just got fucking arrested in Iceland. Yeah, yeah, 100%. but that doesn't make the that's story good. And yeah. I was talking okay. diesel too. Okay, yeah. He had a mouthful of diesel fuel. Yeah. All right. I had a mouthful of he's diesel. And the guy like, was like, "What's going on?" That's what got me arrested. He was probably just like, "Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Could you please turn around?" And he was like, "Yo, relax, bro. Jesus." <laughs> All right. Well, so no, the Icelandics oh don't like the Americans. They haven't since the 1940s. Interesting. Why? Like they're pretty cold. I think the tourism industry has expanded here and now they're just sort of fed up with everybody. And also like the American soldiers in their occupation in the 1940s, there was a lot of, uh, un- oh, a lot of, a lot of American illegitimate babies. Yeah. And they're just pissed about how they acted. So. All right. But. All right. Well, we'll do your um, best to mend international relations, yep. Billy. Apologies to Iceland. Uh, Bill Cotter for Congress.com. All right. You can sell Billy's website. All right. Oh See you guys next week. Love you guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.